Let's do it. Comic community. It's the Bags and Boards podcast. Issue number. <laughs> Issue number. Oh, That's geez. how you know I have comics on the brain. Podcast number 55 with Fire Guy Ryan. Ryan how you feeling, my brother? Ryan. It's been a minute. It's, it has been. I, I'm always a little nervous whenever you hit one of those buttons because Ryan, right like 90% of the time. Don't get nervous. We have the community here. I thought you were just going to say, like, I'm here with Fire Guy Ryan because it's trash. No, and I'm not going to make that mistake, well, Ryan. Not for you, I'm my not brother. Trash. We're here every other week, soon, way more. Stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button, slap the like button. We talk about a lot of funny books on this podcast. You know, on this channel, we talk about comic prices, collecting, Golden Age, Silver Age, modern books, variant comic books, all the above. But the Bags and Boards show. We like to dig deep into the pages of comic books because comics are not just about collecting and slabbing. No, you got to read those damn things. There's stuff. There's stuff on the inside. There's stuff. It's like an onion. You know, you, you onions are kind of like life. Like you peel back the onion. It's like, like a, it's from Shrek. Have you ever seen Shrek? Like a tiny onion? Have you ever heard of Shrek? What's, no. Shrek. It's this, it's this movie. It's a cartoon. And he talks about how the skin is like onions and you feel it. Comic fam, we are going to be talking about funny books today, but not before I tell you about the sponsor of the show, the best new app to buy and sell collectibles. We're talking about whatnot. This is actually our first like real sponsor of the show after four years. Amazing. And every single Wednesday, you can find myself and the whole Whatnot Wednesday squad on this app. We bring comics to the mic. We take over the app for like eight plus hours. And what we do are dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long. And there is a link in the description. I'm going to show you my page. Oh my goodness. Where, where's my buttons? Ryan. I stole them. The element is too small to be displayed is what it says. Oh goodness. That makes, oh, you know, it's because of the chat. The chat took my buttons away. Comic fam, we're we're back, but here it is. Look at this. Comic Tom 101 okay. over on whatnot. This is the page. Look at the follower count. It's a lot of members of the community who follow me over there. Do me a brag. solid. It's, it's, it's a brag straight up, comic fam, because I appreciate you guys so much. And we have a sale that is scheduled for tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Yes, I have Wolverine. Keys, that Avengers right there, is the first time Adamantium was ever talked about in comic books. Holy smokes. And you can join myself. We actually start out the day with Gem Mint from Gem Mint Collectibles at 2 p.m. It's your boy, Gem Mint. Followed up by one of the biggest dealers in the comic book industry, Nerdy Girl Comics, Danielle. She has acquired some crazy grails just in the last couple days. Um, not going on the app. I'm just mentioning because she is like one of the biggest dealers in the country that we have on our Whatnot Wednesday squad. After Danielle, we have Milgi Comics, the comic sensei. And I go live at 5 p.m. Followed up. Oh, I go live with Heron Heavens, by the way, at 5 p.m. So make sure to be there. At 6 o'clock, Comic Pops, my dad, I got him back into comic books this past year and a half. And he's in it hard. He's slacking? No, he's slacking doing it. before this? He was not, he's just doing other work. And he, uh, uh, yeah, you know, because he was doing comics when I was a kid. And yes. then he watched me get back into comics and he slowly got into it. And then he's like, you know what? I want to be a dealer again. I want to hunt. I want to press. I want to grade. And he's now he's back into it. And Good. you can support my dad at 6 p.m. Butch is in the casa today. Butch. Comic Butch. We also have Sammy and Tony, Skeleton Key Comics, who rock the mic at 7. 8 p.m. is the powerful Rage Theo. And we end the day with the Golden Age guru, Jeff. Join us over on the best new app to buy and sell collectibles. It is amazing what's happening over there. And I'm going to prove it to you right now because this is a brand new place to enjoy the, the community and, and the, the comics, the funny books, you know, adding comics to your collections and, and being part of a live chat. You know, it's like if you've been on an Instagram live sale, this is like that, but built for that. This is a newer app This, as far as comics go. And I want to show you something that just took place this past weekend. Hot damn comic fam. Ultimate Fallout 4, the 1 in 25 variant, first Miles Morales, on the app listed dollar star auctions by Frankie's, by Frankie's Comics, and look at what it sold for. $30,034, hot damn comic fam. It happened. It happened, comic fam. Like, this is insane. This is a record. A publicly sold copy of this book has not been seen to reach these heights and it happened on whatnot. 
And we actually stayed throughout the entire stream, myself and like three, 400 people. And we wanted to see it from Frankie's. Frankie's Comics, an amazing, exclusive variant producer and comic store. And we waited for them to say that the payment cleared because we wanted to hear it from them to believe it. And they said it. It happened. 30 grand was sold. It's amazing. You actually are brand new to Whatnot, Ryan. I'm on, I'm on Thursdays, but I haven't hit $30,000 yet. Yeah, man, I haven't I'll hit the $30,000 sales yet. Soon. I don't own any $30,000 comics right now. You got to build to that, man. Mm. I did have a Dejevic number in six, though, at one point. That same Sold book? it too soon. Yeah, yeah, way Oof. too soon. It, it hurts. I don't like to talk about that, but that's not why we're here you today. You brought it up, man. I did, I did. All right, so hit the description. Follow me on Whatnot. Here's the cool thing about... Um, going through the link if you are brand new to the app you click the link and it's going to support the show we get 10 bucks after you purchase your first anything on the app and then you get a 10 dollar credit as well so you actually are going to be getting us some support but then hooking your wallet up with some money to buy some funny books it's a win 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 ryan win 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 exactly all right so what do we have on this podcast i mean it's number 55 i've been chatting with you all month trying to get you back here and I was just so hesitant. I really didn't want to. I know. It's because yeah, of our like, fight that we got into. We did. We big fight. A big fight, comic fan. We fight sometimes. Physically sometimes. No, sometimes I'll hit you in the face. Yeah, it's not okay. It's not appropriate. No, no matter what forum. No, that's right. Or how famous you are. No, but, you know, we, we got into a little bit of an argument. And what that argument was, was whether or not certain comic books were trying to communicate something to us or not. And what I mean by that is sometimes narratives, they take you down a path and it's like, is it, is it as clear what the writer is trying to tell us? Or is there something behind the scenes? Is there something that is in the panels, the artwork, the ambiance? What is it that gets you into it? And Ryan and I disagreed. So he refused to come here. <laughs> but you're back. What brought you back? Was it because we're going to talk about Hulk today? It's the free pizza. That's right. I always have to. He refuses to come over unless I have free pizza. Yeah, that's right. It has to be good pizza, and I refuse to pay. That's right. But it was it Hulk? Was it uh, Catwoman? Because we're going to talk about Catwoman today. Was it Random. Crimson Cage? Mm -hmm. We have some reviews to talk about. Is what I'm trying to communicate to our audience. Um, we also are going to be talking about what I believe is the next big comic book collectible. Everyone's trying to get up on the market, like like get ahead of the curve, right? What's going to be the next big thing? I think I have the answer. Stay tuned for that. We also watched the Batman of course, uh, deleted scene with the Joker. Multiple times. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today, too. We have Hidden Comic Books by James Tynan. Let's get into it, Comic Fam. It's the Bags and Boards podcast number 55. So I'm thinking the first thing that we need to do. Let's turn that off. First thing that we're going to do is, shall we hit him with, shall we hit him with the Hulk? Let's do it. Shall we start with Hulk? Because it's so damn good. I was wrong, comic fam. I was so wrong. Wrong about what? I was wrong about the Hulk. So let's uh, take it back a couple steps. Uh, we had two major industry leaders on two highly respected runs. Who were they, Ryan? Well, that would be Donny Cates, Sir Cates. That's right. Sir Donny Cates and Mr. Get Al, it right. Al Ewing. Al Ewing on Immortal Hulk. Correct. And they actually did some really long runs on Venom and Hulk, respectively. And then they did a Yankee swap. That's right. Totally switched them up. Yes. I mean, I, comic fam, for those of you who are not caught up on Immortal well, who didn't read Immortal Hulk because it's over, and who didn't read Venom, which there's like nobody here who's, who hasn't read Venom, these were like moments in comic history that will be remembered forever like it was Batman New 52 Snyder. You know, like that's it's pretty much it, right? So... Both of these runs are the are, are being said to be the best runs for those characters. For the last few years, they're like the best things Marvel have done. Yep. Venom and Hulk by both right. of these creators. And they switched them over, as Ryan said. And Donny Cates went on to Hulk, and Al Ewing went on to Venom. Which we talked about. And we talked on a about previous it. Previous show. Thing was, I was not like I, Venom was okay. Like I was I, I'm liking Venom more and more. Right. But it was it didn't it didn't get me there the way that I was hoping it would. Specifically because I reread Venom right beforehand. I went through the whole thing, comic fam. The whole thing. All of Venom, the 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 Nam issues. I went right. through absolute carnage. I went through the King in Black. 
all the tie-ins. I read it all because I wanted that feeling again because I've had that feeling every issue came, you know, that it came out. Anyways, I digress because I wasn't like 100% on board with Venom, but I was seeing where they were going with it. I'm in it. It's on my poll list. I'm going to do it. I read Hulk 1. We did an exclusive on Hulk 1, and I liked what happened, but I had that same worry. I'm like, oh, I missed some Mortal Hulk. Shoot. Yeah. And I, I said that too soon. Hulk is brilliant. This is an outstanding superhero comic book. Sir Casey did it again. He did it again. And we wanted to make sure to talk about this early enough in the run where if you have not given this Hulk run a try by Donny Cates, that it's only, uh, I think issue five comes out tomorrow. That's right. So you're not too far behind the curve if you can still get your hands on these, uh, especially now that we're a few issues in. And it's six issues. Uh, it's a six issue miniseries. You mean the story arc? The story arc, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> just gonna not, not mini series, excuse me. Yeah. No, no, it's a cancel. No, no, six issue arc. So this is a okay. great time to get caught up. And we're not going to, as always with our reviews, we choose how much we're going to spoil because we want to get you into it and we want to talk about it freely. But we're going to reserve enough of it so that there's still, as our homie, a.k.a. Mr. Bola would say, me on the bone. Yeah, this is catchphrase? Yeah. That's yeah. Where I've, I've heard him say it a couple times. Okay. All right. So, Ryan, why don't you give us the lowdown on Hulk because uh, Immortal Hulk was a near horror narrative for a lot of the run. Yes. Kind of went a little cosmic, got a little weird towards the end, but Immortal Hulk had some EC comics vibe. Well, can you explain that? Vibes. <laughs> sure. There were, um, there were truly horrific graphic sequences, especially early on in Immortal Hulk that were, like you said, ripped straight out of the olden days of, of a horror of horror comics. Horror like monster tales, yeah. The one that sticks out to me the most is when Hulk was dissected into a bunch of little bitty pieces and stored in glass jars in a laboratory. One of my favorites. Yeah, that's a, that's a classic moment. And this Hulk is not the same. This comic is not that horror flavor, even though Donny Cates does write some spooky stuff from time to time. It's never as like overtly terrifying as it was at an equal point in Al Ewing's run. This is a nice little lead up that's taken a little too long, but I think it's important to mention that like Venom, you, f you got to read Venom, Cates, to enjoy what's happening with Dylan Brock and, and, and what's taking place with Eddie Brock as the Lord of the symbiotes, right? The God of the symbiotes, if you would. Immortal Hulk, you don't really need to read at all to enjoy Donny Cates' run on Hulk. That's correct. So what he's done is there is a time jump in between the ending of Immortal Hulk and where we pick up with Donny Cates Hulk, where something goes very wrong. Some sort of Hulk accident happened. <laughs> accident might not be the right word. Incident, Incident. happened in yeah. El Paso, Texas. Yeah. And, and Donnie's from Texas. So, you know, he brings it back to Texas when he can. He does that. Yeah. I enjoy it. Um, it's like Stephen King in Maine. Everything happens in Maine. Exactly. You know, you just don't go to either place. That's right. They're terrifying. Apparently. But this thing happened in El Paso, and we, in issue, still in issue four, have no idea really what that is exactly. Something bad to, uh, that was bad enough to the point where Bruce Banner decides, you know, I'm just, I'm out. I'm going to. He's going to take over. Yeah, I'm going to completely fracture my entire sense of self and do my own thing. I'm still a little confused as to exactly what's happening here, but you're supposed to be. Okay, so this is essentially the start of the review. Um, we're going to start this off by teasing you that Wolverine from Hulk 181 returns to the pages of comic books in this run. So you need to read this comic book. You need to know every single issue. We're not going to spoil things too much, but what I will say is that this is a... Sir Cates has developed a way so that he can tell whatever stories he wants in the pages of comic books, regardless of if editors think it's a good idea or think he should do it. He has a mechanism for telling the Hulk's tale so that he can just have uh, a, a dreamlike narrative take place at any point. Anything crazy that's in Sir Cates's mind, he can make that a thing in comics now, specifically in the Hulk's brain. Nope. Bruce Banner's brain, Hulk's personality, but trapped in a danger room within that. Let's break that down a little bit. It's confusing, but you just started this off by saying it's confusing, Ryan. It's supposed to be, and I think that's one of the reasons this, this series gets a little better the more you read it, because it starts to make a little more sense to peel back some of that Shrek onion, if you will. There we go. Uh, Bruce has managed to separate his Hulk 
personality. Which from, has done this before. He has. But they're typically two different beings, right? When the Hulk is here, you got the Hulk. When you have the Bruce Banner there, he, you know, it's Bruce. You know, they're different personalities. Yeah. And he has somehow also managed to cage the raging green Hulk monster inside of a mental... Danger room. Danger room, like the X-Men's training room where you can just... Make them fight whatever you want. Okay, so now we got to talk about the pages. Okay, so we have Hulk, ah, Hulk so number confused. one. That's No, no, bear with me, comic Ugh. fam. Ryan, just, just hang on tight. I'm trying, man. We're going to take him for a ride. They're going to know exactly where we're going. So we start off the comic book with Hulk trying to smash through a room, which is essentially a danger room, as mentioned. The Hulk is caged in Bruce Banner's mind, and he can't get out. Bruce Banner is the pilot of the Hulk. And a lot of people have compared this. I believe it's even compared in this comic book that essentially what's happened is Bruce Banner has created a Hulk starship. He's piloting the Hulk's body from within with the brain of the Hulk caged in a danger room type of area. Oh, what's going on, Ryan? Oh yeah. Make sure to grab that. Okay. So, Ryan, please explain to the community what Danger Room, like why, why are we talking about that? Like what, what is that comparison? Because right now, as you can see on screen, this whole situation is one of the worst crises that's ever taken place. It's got the Avengers put together. Dr. Strange is literally saying, I know it's a lot to take in, but it is why I have gathered you all here. This is potentially the greatest threat we have ever faced. And, in the, and if the events of El Paso have well and truly broken Bruce's mind, then I fear we may be out of options. Explain, Ryan. Now you're putting all the all the heavy work on me. I uh, want to. Why you're here, out. Ryan? We do it. Haven't mentioned Ryan. it yet. This is Ryan Otley doing the pencils in here, uh, and we'll get to that because it's a little strange to see. I enjoy it, but it's strange. We'll talk about that in a second. This page is, is honestly a good example of why I love his work here. It's so slick and detailed and crisp. Look at those lines. I'm just glad to see his Spider-Man again, honestly. But I always miss Ryan Stegman. It's weird not having Ryan with Donnie. That is true. They are, they are like a like a married couple at this at this stage of their careers. I think all like partners should be able to like trust their significant other to like hang out with people and and not feel like something's wrong, right? But I get this weird vibe of I'm reading Hulk going, ah, is it wrong that I enjoy Ryan Otley with? Johnny Cates? Is it odd that I'm thinking these things? The answer is yes. Anyways, so the danger room sure. is where Hulk is confined and to. They don't ever use that exact phrase. No, no, we're that's just a way we're saying, you know, we're, we're using, I'm using that to try and make this make sense in my dumb monkey brain. But the danger room is the X-Men's training facility where they are able to kind of just train and practice against whatever obstacles foes they can create and think of so something similar to that is being used in this brain space where the hulk is and bruce banner is somehow able to harness the fight juice <laughs> yeah because the anger specifically the or fight juice as ryan said <laughs> sure. let's just call it fight juice going forward harness the fight juice yes and that is how he pilots this Hulk ship, which is not really a ship. Yeah, it's just his but body. It's him, him, I'm like twenty five percent a little too confused. Well, it's just like it's like he's like you know controlling. I mean, you remember like like Mars attacks, right? There's like little aliens within the brain, and they're men like, is it Men in Black? It was yeah. Men in Black. Thank you. It's kind of like that, but not literally. It's more figuratively in in these personalities. So Hulk is confined to this room. And as he gets angry, he gets stronger. That's what we know of, of, of the Hulk. And because he's locked away, Bruce can amp up the fight juice as Ryan has perfectly described to essentially make him stronger at will. Oh my gosh, this has never been done before. Pretty sure it's never been done before. I'm pretty sure. I don't think you ever actually say that <laughs> in comic Ewing books. Al did not do this before. I can I can say that at least. At least to this extent and, and this much control as if he was piloting a spaceship. But this is one of the coolest parts of the book. Like there's Bruce Banner is on a quest to do something nefarious. Clearly the Avengers have problems with it. The the this is gonna have long lasting effects. Who knows 
where this narrative is going to take us. We don't even know what Bruce Banner's actually trying to do just yet, but we're going to find out soon. But that's not why I want to talk about this book. I want to keep it to the danger room because the Hulk is confined in an area and gets hit with whatever Bruce Banner wants him to get hit to rage him up to amplify that juice. He's making a cocktail here, essentially. And that cocktail is in the form of whatever Donny Cates can think of that he wants to see in the pages of comic books. Okay. So the first stage... Well, I guess technically the first stage. Did I even get pictures of the first stage? Well, we have one of the stages is monsters. And who is that? Hulk versus monsters. That's Fang Fang Foom, I believe, and a bunch of old school Marvel comics. That's right. Monsters. That's right. He just puts them up against the giant dragon. And it's something that's like, all right, how do you get this character in comics to fight them? Oh, yeah, you can't just like. Oh, he's being utilized, or it doesn't make sense to have him here. Oh, you know what? Doesn't matter. I have found a way. This is how we're going to do it. Anything goes in the danger room. Because it's all imaginary in this kind of mindscape. You don't have to concoct some sort of weird plot where the actual Hulk is actually fighting this entire group of old school monsters. Oh, and what's this? Same principle is at play here to make the Hulk fight a gigantic old school looking Wolverine with his... Even dorkier looking costume. That's right. This right here is fresh, you know, freshly from the pages of Hulk 180, 181. We have the old school Logan, a giant sized old school Logan. You know, it's a combination of Hulk 181 and giant size X-Men number one. That's right. That just All hit the- me. Oh my goodness. I know. Giants. Okay. Giants. It's the bags and boards podcast. Uh, I hit the subscribe button person, man. This doesn't work for me. This doesn't work for you. No, I mean, it's cool. It's cool to see, but the giant size Wolverine combo didn't really click. You want to know what doesn't work for you is is Logan. You just have a thing about not liking Logan. I do. I'm jealous. Oh, and there also is an alternate Bruce Banner. That's right. Cause he's going into a different universe. This comic is wild. And just, just, okay. Can I just say this one thing? Go ahead. This Bruce Banner, I don't think I've ever seen him in comics before. This is like a a new universe version of Bruce Banner. The eye patch makes me think of one person. It makes me think of a character from Buffy. His name is Xander. And by the end of the series, he gets his eye cut and he, he wears an eye patch going forward. And if you read the Whedon, uh, comics post that, he rocks an eye patch. If you read Buffy the Last Vampire Slayer, shout out Boom Studios, Xander is rocking an eye patch in old age. Donnie is a very vocal Buffy fan. Is like, this a tribute to Buffy? You guys are pals, just ask him. Oh, you know what? We go way back. We go way, way back to, to preschool. To Comic Con. <laughs> 2019, whatever that was. I think he's older than me. I'm fairly certain he's older than both of us. All right. Well, what we do have is a, a world where anything goes because it's in the mind of Bruce Banner. And I'm going to leave you with one thing. You know, if there is a way to get Marvel zombies in the pages of your comic books, you got to do it. So he did. We have a anything goes Hulk narrative, but it's still tethered to reality and has major universe consequences. This is what I love about superhero comics. This is what I love about Sir Cates. It's a, it's a really fun book, and I think it's kind of necessary. After Immortal Hulk was a really kind of heady and a, a kind of a downer at times, and this book is just fun for four issues in so far. Like, it's a quick read, and it's a completely different vibe than Immortal Hulk. And it's, it's good that you don't have to read all 50 issues of that to follow along with what's happening here. I'm having a hell of a time reading it. Next one on our list of reviews today. Oh my gosh. Catwoman becomes a dancer. And she's really good at it. We have Catwoman issue number 39. And who is the creative team behind this, Ryan? Written by Teeny Howard with art by Nico Leon. That's right. And this is a... Uh, as a new creative team. Yes. And I believe they're they're going to be on the run for a little bit, but I'm not sure if it's much more than what has been released at this point. Oh, man. 
I hope, hope I hope you're wrong. You know what's interesting, Ryan? I always hope you're wrong, but I hope you're especially wrong here. I, I I really do too. And here's the interesting thing. I think there's a lot of members of the community who disagree with us. I really am enjoying Catwoman. This right here is a fantastic narrative and one that I am not as familiar with because I'm not up on Catwoman as much as other superhero comic books. However, that's changing with this one. We have Catwoman 39. The first issue of A New Era starts here. Back in Gotham. And the cat wants in. Cat, get it? Because she's Catwoman. She's a Catwoman, okay. right? Okay. So we will, be ta- we will be talking about um, the Batman film by the end of this podcast. So stay sure. tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button. But this right here is a fun tale that I thought, like right out the gate, after reading the first few pages, Fire Guy Ryan's going to like this because it has mafia stuff in it. Yeah. Is that, is that, be honest, Ryan, is that what we're dealing with here? That is not the reason I subscribed to this book, but it was a very welcome surprise. How much of a welcome surprise? Uh, How excited did you get? Because I know your excitement levels, Ryan. Very low. My excitement levels are always very low. So you were like, oh, that's fun. For me, it's like horror and then mafia slash crime, I guess. Okay. As far as like favorite genres in storytelling go, except for it's like you know Ed Brubaker. Well, yeah, if he did an outright mafia book, that'd be really cool. But he just mainly sticks to the crime stuff, which is still really More cool. Crime. I feel yeah. like it's, it's it's coming. It's coming. They're like okay. cousins. Well, Catwoman's back in Gotham, and this is a perfect opportunity to get on a new run. If you watched the recent Batman film and like Zoe Kravitz rendition of Catwoman, which I thought it was stellar. This right. is one of my. F- I haven't just, we'll, we'll save it. We'll save it. We'll save it. Okay. But Catwoman 39, you have Selena Kyle returning back to Gotham and being a badass every single page for the four, is it four issues or three issues that we've heard? Three issues, four comes out very soon. Every single page. Yeah. She's really cool. This is my first Catwoman comic and I took the chance to jump on it because it's a new creative team. It's a fresh jumping on point. So I figured I would take the chance. And uh, I really enjoy it. Like, it's it's surprising me how much I, I love a Catwoman book. All right, well, let's get into why. So Catwoman 39. First off, hold up, go back. I'm going to shout out Jeff Deckel. Deckel, the cover yep. artist here, is one of my favorite cover artists. He did the covers for Chariot. Oh, that's right. He's a very yeah. talented artist, and the he's doing the A covers here for Catwoman, but the B covers are all done by Jenny Frizen still. Very difficult decision if you're, one, if you're someone like me who can only do one cover per issue that you get. I went, I went with, with these ones. I really we haven't Jeff. even gotten to the one in 25 variants. So just, just like sure. stay tuned. Stay tuned. Because no, it, 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 <laughs> Ryan's just shaking just his head. Just this one. Whatever, it's just it's like, I know, it's so much. It's, beautiful. it's so beautiful. Okay. So we have a tale here. Is it like I keep saying tale. It's, it's purposeful. It's a cat. It's I'm a trying to be witty, tails. comic fam. I can't even see Butch's tail. I did a Butch whole is here. He's here because he is a big fan of Catwoman. So one thing that I really enjoy about this book is that it... I didn't add it up, but I really think that it is close to about even how often the narrative is Catwoman speaking to the reader versus what is actually happening in the book. A lot of narration. Right. Which I like. It doesn't really happen a lot in comics. I think narration bubbles are sort of falling out of style in the modern age, and it's kind of cool to see it make an appearance here. I am also a big fan of the art style in this book. Um, the backgrounds specifically, the choice of colors, color work in general, panel placement, it is so um, dynamic. Mm-hmm. I'm going to bring it up a little bit. I want to see some. What do you want to see, Ryan? Some Tell me. Details here, man. Explain what you're seeing these... to our audio community because this podcast is going to be available on audio That's only, true. SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes in the future. And we'll just tell you what we're seeing, Comic Fam. This is the inside of the, uh, the aforementioned, aforementioned strip club where, uh, what is this, four different members, heads of Gotham's crime families are coming to have a meeting. That's right. They, they visit this club, and they're up to their crimes. You know, like, these are not great people. And no. one of which, um, how do you pronounce her name? Because I, I, I almost, in my mind, I called her Echo the whole time. But it was, Echo? it's I, I, I'd say Echo? A- Echo? Echo? Echo, who is a former love interest Right, they get, they get into it later on, but they have some history here. And the rest of these guys are basically just mafia goons. Like, by goons, I, of course, mean the boss, the bosses. They're here to plot and plan and scheme in a public place 
where the odds of them being like overheard by a wiretap. Not 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 to throw around my mafia knowledge, but you want to do that in a public place. Brian knows a lot about mafia stuff. If you do it in a private place, like for example, your your own personal private business club, there's a chance you could have a wire somewhere in there, you know? You they got could, a wire on, the right? The feds could have crept in and bugged the place while you were gone. You wearing a wire? No. Okay. No, no. But if I was, I wouldn't say yes either. Okay, there you go. Ryan knows. Ah! Oh, and then you get hit with pages like this. Hot Jordi damn. Jordi Belair on the colors here, by the way. And that's one of the main standout things that made me kind of fall in love with this, with this, with this issue as I was reading. It was my first time. This is in the first couple pages of issue 39. Selena is such a smart character. Go into the upper left. All right, let's do it. Her intelligence level, it makes sense. Like, okay, post reading this, I never felt more understanding about her and Batman's connection. Like, I read through all the Tom King stuff, and I'm yep. like, yeah, I get it. But Batman's not even in this run, and the way that she communicates, the way she talks and thinks out her plans, because she's narrating it to the reader a lot of the time. All the black, uh, the, all the black panels here, that's her speaking to the reader. It makes you go, oh, wow, she's, like, planned this out so far in advance. Oh, wow, she sees things that other people didn't even think to expect. She has plan B, C, D, E, and F. Oh, yeah, she's she's doing what Batman does. She's hanging out with Batman too much and learning yeah. how to plot and scheme in advance. Yeah, she's essentially, you know, low-key a, a detective herself. I mean, you kind of have to be to be as good of a thief as she is. And the reason why she chooses to do what she does it's all because she is so damn independent because she wants to, because it's fun, because she wants something, or sometimes she just wants to think about it, you know? Do I even want it? No, I just want to break in just to just to know that I could. Oh, that diamond yeah. from later on? Very cool, I just right? like her here. She's doing all of this. This, this. this is her that we're seeing right here in the negative space, by yeah, the way. Yeah, she's fantastic. infiltrated the, the, the club. Not not too difficult to do, you know? She's she's a, I mean, I do it all the time. Yeah, Ryan sneaks... Ryan, have you ever... Okay, I, we're, okay hold on. <laughs> hold on. Let me bring this back. Ryan, uh, okay, I'm going to ask you something. And Kyle fam, you got to hit the like button because this is why you're here. We, I, I want to tread lightly here. You know, we have a very appropriate show for the whole community, you know. Have you Dude. ever been to a strip club? I've never been to a strip club. I'll say that. I've been one time. You've been to a strip club one time? One time. Probably not going to go again. <laughs> not so much? No. No. It was a what can you tell me that's appropriate for the audience? Can you tell me this? What did you wear? I was... <laughs> did you wear like... As you can tell, I'm a fan of... Dumb pop culture T-shirts. Uh, I happened to be wearing my Goosebumps T-shirt <laughs> you were on the day, that, like an R.L. Stein T-shirt. Yes, with the Slappy the Dummy on there. <laughs> the I've, dummy, I've worn the puppet, it all the time on this. The show. puppet, yeah, dummy that shirt There's, you have. It's it's an old shirt, so I mean, it's, you'd have to go back <laughs> on the beginning of the channel. We were at a um, we were at a wedding, and a friend of mine took me aside, and we just went off to this strip club. And I don't know why I was wearing it. Was, was it it might have been like the day before the wedding or like the rehearsal or something. So it's like a bachelor party type of situation. I can't be wearing a Goosebumps t-shirt to my friend's wedding. <laughs> so I think why day, not? I think it was the day before. But so you, regardless. What did you wear at the, the wedding? wedding? Did you wear a suit at the wedding? And you, nice. but, so you're dressed so up. You're like, oh, I'm going my to my... My finest Goosebumps t-shirt <laughs> I wore for the wedding. You go to the wedding in your best of clothes. But then when you're done... And you're going to be like civilian Ryan. You got to bring your R.L. Stein shirts. Of course. That makes sense. Multiples. Awesome. Well, amazing. Well, let's take us back to uh, Catwoman here because we have um, Catwoman who is about to kick ass and she does. The whip. Drawn so well. I love the negative space that is randomly utilized throughout this. I mean, you can see with the, the colors that it's more of um, negative space to demonstrate the action taking place and less about the lighting. Yes, but it is also the lighting in this in this club environment. I also really love too the all the pinks and the purples and the neons really, really get me going. I love it. There we go. So we have uh, Selena Kyle. And I guess the one thing about this that I can imagine being a little bit difficult to follow is there are multiple moments of narratives going in different directions. And this is a short 
four issue series, I believe. Or is this it first fa- story arc is four issues, and we have three of them so far. I hope you're wrong. I I don't know where you read that there that the creative team isn't sticking around. I have not heard this, uh, but I hope you're wrong because I I like this. Well, we have um, Selena Kyle who is infiltrating this mafia scene, and I really enjoy how she how she does it. Um, you you kind of see her um, her mapping out of a plan prior to like, like it takes place and then you kind of get hit with why she did it, how she does it. And it just demonstrates how much more control she is over situations than anyone can foresee. Yeah. And I guess they demonstrate that on this panel where you see her casing out this hotel, which is a, a building where these mob, mob guys kind of stash their girlfriends to keep secret from their wives at home. These are so, not good dudes here. No. I mean, we're talking about the uh, 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 Gotham's, Gotham's uh, you know, leaders of industries that are corrupted we to at the little, very core. Got a little taste of that in the Batman movie. That's right. The crime families and the Falcones and all them. But there's a uh, abandoned, empty apartment in this hotel that Selena kind of just takes over. She just moves in. No one's living there. It's a crime scene. So she's now just going to hide out here in the middle of this environment and use that as a staging ground for all of her, her capers. That's right. She's about to go on. Yeah. She chooses what she wants and goes and gets it. You know, she, she did the, the, she had the foresight to figure out, Oh, this is a perfect spot for me to land when I decided to go there. And sure enough, she has her own apartment and what she finds there is a gift. And if you ever want to know, what to get a significant other, someone that you admire, a fan of, you buy him a cat apparently because that is what um, she finds in her apartment. This is a very expensive cat also. Sure. Not as expensive as Butch. Butch was a, Butch is very, very valuable. $10 million. That's right. And this, and this cat is nowhere near as colorful as Butch. That's right. It's like glowing blue. So I, don't, I don't get it. Well, I don't think that Maybe that's the light. It. Maybe that's the light from the I outside. think it's supposed to demonstrate the value of the gato. I, I don't know. We have a character that gets introduced. We have a character that wants to recruit her to join him or her. We don't know the 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 gender of this person. To join them in their uh, thieving activities. Sure. It's but like somebody who's more like minded to Selena though. If, Not necessarily just steal for gain. Steal for multiple reasons. You know, Batman, anti-hero reasons. If Batman is the angel on her shoulder, then this this person is the devil on her shoulder because they are trying to convince her to pull off some sketchy crimes. And also, by the way, I just so happened to kill some of the people that were here guarding the stuff that we stole. That's right. So she finds out uh, after she's knocked unconscious that some people have been murdered by this new associate of hers. And now she's like, uh-oh, like I have gotten myself in a little over my head. By getting involved with this person who may not be as good as they present themselves to be. I kind of love this art. I just love all of, all of this, man. I don't know who Nico Leon is. Like, I feel like I'm missing out. I want to I wanna research and go back. What's interesting about Selena in this comic that stuck with me, because some, some aspects of characters, like, you know, like just as far as the their design, their decisions, you know, some things stick with me more even than the narrative itself. It's like, oh, this one decision is very memorable. There is a murder of one of the women she sh- she saves from the club that uh, she because when she was there at the beginning things went south and like gunshots were fired and black mask showed up and like all this like it, it went south very quickly and she had to escape all of a sudden with a couple of a couple of uh, fellow dancers there exactly and one of those dancers gets murdered muck duck and th- there's an a I'm not even sure if it's if it's in the, on this page, it's on the screen, but this is Selena. She's wearing a wig, and she says that something along the lines that if this was Batman, he would feel guilty. But she's not the person who committed this murder. She may have been, you know, present in the whole situation. She may have been one of the many people, and you could even look at her as being partially to blame. But it wasn't her who did it. And that's what separates her from Batman in how she assesses the situation. She wants to go after the murderer not because she feels guilty, because of the the statement that they have made to her. It's like it's disrespectful. 
You can see it down on the bottom, all that dark red stuff down there is like a flashback sequence to when they escaped from all the gunfire and stuff at the club. And the mob has murdered this person as a way to get back at Selena, just as like a, a move, like a chess move without any real acknowledgement of her humanness, her personhood. So Selena views it as like just a disrespect on a on a fundamental level and wants to wants to get revenge. So we have multiple narratives taking place, a return to Gotham, her kind of be, you know, establishing herself in the city that she hasn't been in a minute. Then we also have the mafia families that she's taking down with multiple narr narratives intertwined within that. But then also a new character that's trying to recruit her to do some more nefarious, but yeah. more like not necessarily bad. They're all illegal, but they're not necessarily sure. terrible. Things. So you get to the murdering aspect. Yeah, that's, that's a little that rough. That's a little weird. But did they deserve it? These are the types of conundrums that are explored in this comic book. And it's done in three issues. I also want to say this is my first time. These are the only three issues of Catwoman I've ever read. And it makes me want to check out more. And that's what I love about superhero books. Like right. like for Hulk. Like you read Immortal Hulk. And all through that run, I was like, I want to go back and find some other cool Hulk stuff. I've never cared or read about Hulk before. And I feel the same way with Catwoman. Like I know Ron V just finished up a run on Catwoman. And I do love his writing. So I'm going to I'm gonna look into that here pretty soon too. All right. Let's take a quick second to recognize uh, Sosa Micah's variants of these covers. The one in 25s are outstanding. They have been piping hot in the community for good reason. And we're going to show them to you now. Um, so take a look at this. We have issue one in 25, or rather, excuse me, issue 39, the one in 25 variant. Um, I would love to know the community's favorite in the comment section below. I want to see you guys in the chat. Tell me which one is your favorite. This right here is Glorious. Um, I mean, all the gems. This could be a gem mint variant. It's your boy gem mint. All right, take a look at this one. Next one here. Did you see? Hold on, go back real quick. Did oh, yeah, you yeah. see the up, 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 panel up. Of, in the issue? There was a, a scene in in the middle of the Catwoman issue where Selena Kyle's wearing a T-shirt and it's got a dorky looking, silly like internet kind of cat doing this exact same pose, like reaching for a gem on a pile of gems. Oh, you're right. There's I'm gonna a, have to look. At, I'm gonna have to open my copy up again. And, and now it's a nice. Now nice I know. Now you know what it is. Like yeah, I remember nice seeing nod. that and wondering what kind of meme this is a reference to. But it's it's a reference to this variant cover, which I liked. All right. Then we have issue 40. Same artist, same incentive. Um, issue 41. Nice. 42. And look at issue 43 being solicited. Holy smokes. That's Harley Quinn. Excited to see that. Clearly, we're going to see Harley in this run. I mean, I'm assuming. And, and she hasn't shown up yet. Nope. And then I also found this one. Um, I believe this is the next one, um, issue 46. I could be wrong about that, um, but they've only done one incentive variant from her each time. Maybe because they're getting popular. They maybe are doubling up, but there's not even a trade dress on this one. So these are like early solicitations for comics that aren't going to be out for months. But keep an eye out. This one right here is my favorite. So um, I'm going to run through them one more time because I just asked people to check it out. So this was 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. I must be 44. Numerically, it makes sense. Let the me know only. what you think. Which one are the comics that you would pick up if you had access to grab one? And I suggest that if any of these are at your local comic shop, and you can grab them for what they typically sell incentives for, which is traditionally around ratio, 25, 30 bucks. This is a book, actually all of these books, they're hitting between 40 to heights of like 70 for some of them. I know that first one with her on the pile of gems that was reused for the second print cover for 39. Correct. And that's how you know that it's, it's, it's hot in the community because the publishers want to bring it back to press. All right. Well, this next comic book, I'm just going to say how it is. It shouldn't work. That's right. We were over here trying to think of the best way to describe what experience we each had with this particular book. And I got to say, this is an amazing comic book and it's just another comic. It's no surprise. It's by AWA Upshot. And I don't know if they've ever made i'm sure they have you know something i wouldn't care for but i feel like it's every single comic i get from awa i'm like thoroughly enjoying we're talking about crimson crimson we're talking about crimson cage comic fam i love this publisher i have gone on record on this channel and several others multiple times 
Uh, they've been around for two years. They just had their two year anniversary like a couple weeks ago. Actually. So crazy how new they are. And they've done about 30 titles and I have now read all of them. I've gone through and read everything they've done and you're right. There's some that aren't as good and it's based on personal preference. I think even the ones I don't like are still pretty good. This one is still going. Uh, it's on issue four out of five right now and it is easily in my top 10 somewhere. Writer John Lee's artist Alex Cormack and... This is written by the same writer on a book that we praised on this channel months ago. Yes, this is the same writer as Hotel, from also from AWA. A great horror anthology book. However, I think I like Crimson Cage a little more. Oh, um, me too. Okay. Absolutely. No, Hotel was fun because it's like, it's an anthology. All set in a horror anthology set in the place of a hotel. And different rooms, right? And they're wild. You can read each one right. as like a one shot. It's like an ice cream man vibes to a degree. Crimson Cage. And this is why this shouldn't make sense, but it's but it does. Like like it doesn't make sense that it's so good. You have pro wrestling, right? Eighties pro wrestling. Eighties, which is a very, which is very important. Yes, this is like this is pre WWE. This is like old school Hulk wrestling Hogan kind of wrestling. Yeah, like 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 they're you have to like really fight to get to the top. No pun intended. Like it's sure. this is a tough tough industry to make it in arguably more then than now, which is, it's a very difficult industry to make it in now too. So you have pro wrestling, you have horror, and you have Shakespeare Macbeth. And that's or what I said. You? Or do, do or do you? It, <laughs> <laughs> it is Macbeth mixed with wrestling, which should not work. Period. But then you add like, not just, because even Macbeth, it wasn't necessarily a horror. Scary book. It's 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 a scary story. It's angsty. Yeah. It's not. I mean, obviously, it's Shakespeare. It's not grotesque. It's no, not this like book definitely adds some gore, which you can see here just on the cover alone. There's there's some gore elements in this comic, but yeah, Shakespeare didn't necessarily get into that aspect of it, but they're there. It's a book about a guy who kills the king and wants to become the king and plots and schemes and there's witches and spooky scenes. Macbeth is is a is a tale of. You know, it's kind of like selling your soul to the devil. You know, when it's did like, you read it last? High school. It's like one of the few Shakespeare I was stuff a I read. In high school. So I was like fifteen. Like I really had to read it. Like that and Romeo and Juliet. They and made stuff like me that. read it. Like I didn't want to. Like that's the problem with high school, man. I was fifteen years old. I'm not going to want to read Shakespeare. I but, would like to read this book again and go back to it as an adult. Probably can. Yeah, but yeah, you know, they like it takes months to go through this stuff in class, and they they hammer it in. They I mean, you learn it. suck out all the fun you could possibly have from from reading anything <laughs> in school, which is like not how it should be. My my uh, my my high school would make us write out like notes for every chapter, and it got so terrible. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm basically rewriting the the book by hand. Like, why am I doing this? But anyways, uh, Macbeth, from what I remember, it has been a long time. The, this tale of someone who is told that their future could be something that they really want. And if they strive for that and, and lean into the bad decisions that you'll have to take to get there, you will reach these goals. But it's like those goals at what cost? And Violence, short lived, which is an important part too. You will get to the top, but very soon after something bad will happen and, and you, you won't have all your fingers, you know, sure. it's, it's going to, it's going to be some, some problems on the way. And by the end of it, you may regret that you even did it in the first place. Right. And it's a, it's a classic like story that Shakespeare really kind of na nailed honestly way back in the day. And they have, they have made different versions of this over the years that I really like. I love throne of blood, the Japanese movie from like the fifties and sixties. I should remember exactly when I think it's the fifties by Kurosawa. It's a great, great adaptation of Macbeth. I think Crimson Cage deserves to be in that same category. So we have pro wrestling, a, a gentleman and his significant other who are really just trying to make it. They're trying to become famous to the level of a Hulk Hogan. You they're know, pretty, someone. They're stuck in like Louisiana wrestling, which I imagine is not that great. Like local, local wrestling trying to climb up the ladder and be nationally famous. So... We're, I'm showing you um, pictures right here of, of wrestling on one end. And this is what you think of, right? 1984, wrestling, pro wrestling. You know, you have uh, our, our lead character who's doing his best. Chuck Frenzy. 
Yeah, Chuck. That's right. What Chuck a cool Frenzy. name. Like, I, lo- a cool I love name. that. That's such a good wrestling name. And look at he's he's cutting his forehead with the razor blade so he can get some blood. It is theatrics, right? You sure. know, it, it's, well, it's it's still blood. You know? It's still it's not blood. Like fake anything. I mean, this is a uh, this is entertainment right here. You know, yeah. but you actually start the comic off with this. This is straight up some like Ari Aster level yeah. witch types of characters. Yeah, like the, the classic story of Macbeth was the three witches in the forest, but this comic has transplanted that to three kind of like swamp witches in the Louisiana, in the bayou. That's right. So it, it matches the new environment that this story is in, but it's still very much the original witches and, you know, giving a, giving a horrifying prophecy. So their promise would come soon, but not before we learn about the struggles of our two main characters, um, you know, partners in wrestling here. And doing what they can do to try to get to the top, to be so entertaining that they can get picked up by something larger, a bigger wrestling firm. You know, these are production companies and they're always recruiting. They're going in and out of different states to do their traveling, to to try and televise. Find um, new talent. Find new talent, right? Yeah. And this is their shot. And they they know that they're going to get a shot potentially, but they're running out of time. This isn't a, a field where you can do it forever. Sure. It's so brutal. It is uh, it's extremely brutal. And that's kind of what you see here. You see our, our lead characters, um, specifically Chuck. These are those same two wrestlers, but out of costume. Which and is like having a drink at a bar. And like, I remember thinking back to like the two weeks that I watched wrestling when I was like 12. You only watched wrestling for two weeks. I didn't care that much. I, I, I got sucked into like the, the Rock and the Undertaker and, and like the early, the early 2000s. WWF kind of stuff. I was in it for a little while, and then I'm just like, I, I want to play video games. Apparently, WrestleMania is this weekend. We're, we're finding out from oh. um, Mr. Noggin Comics. There you go. So I guess we timed this perfectly then. We sure did. And uh, I believe, is does Issue 5 come out this week? Ish, no, it's the new Hulk that comes out this oh, week. Oh, Hulk comes out this week. Yeah. But, this, but Issue 5 comes out soon, so this is wrapping End up. End of this. April. So there's yeah. actually time. Yeah, get caught if up you, on this If you want to get the, the to get all these before the final issue comes out. But I'm, I was thinking back to my wrestling days when I was little, and... When you're watching it, you see the performance, right? You're in, you're either in the room watching it on TV or you're in, if you're lucky, you're in the, you know, in the arena watching them do it in person. Sure. And you just see what they do on stage. But this comic does a really good job of showing you what it's like when they go back to the locker room or when they're at home or when they're at the bar talking to each other and like planning out their careers and their ambitions and their goals. And yeah, it's not WWE entertainment translated to a comic story. No, it's, it's an aspects aspect of the job of the characters we follow and we are actually following a narrative about the world outside of the ring but the ring is what it's all about right and especially in chuck's case he has heard this prophecy from these witches in the swamp here because after they come out of that bar the two of them stumble through this shortcut through the swamp which is sounds like a bad idea i wouldn't have done that and on this shortcut, they encounter these terrifying witches in the swamp who give them both this prophecy. And the prophecy it pretty much says, well, one of you guys, you're going to have a great career. You're going to be super famous. You're going to get everything you want. The other guy, you're not going to make it, but your kids are going to have a cool life. So, sorry. <laughs> like, So it's like, which guy are you going to be? And yeah. right there, it's like the start of the poison. Yes. And this just seeps into Chuck's brain forever. And he can't unhear this. The art is outstanding in this comic book. So much detail. Um, I mean, look at this right here. This this one page, it, it you kind of get surprised to a degree about how dark it gets. You know, you go from the lights, the show floor, the 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 ring, the action, the Hulk Hogan S. But then you go to the Bayou and you're dealing with some like terrifying stuff. And this is the last page that I will actually show the community because okay. issue one is a great setup. Issue two, you go full horror. Grotesque, yeah. blood, and it's more akin to issue one's cover in okay. the narrative than issue one is. That's a good way to put it. I like the way that the that Chuck, he goes home and tells his wife what he heard, and they both kind of figure out a plan for what to do. That's right. And they're going to go the Macbeth route. They're like, how exactly. can we forge our path, you know, so that we get what the witches say could be on the table, but at what cost we're going to find out. And if you're familiar with Macbeth, then this story does a good enough job of following closely to the original source material. So you, if you know the story of Macbeth, you know how this Crimson Cage wraps up, but it's still 
so shocking and scary and like really, really, really good. It's really disturbing, comic fam. You got to check this book out. It's wild. You're going to have a blast doing reading it. It's one of those situations where it's like, oh, man, I just love the medium of comics so much because you can literally put any genre. I don't have to be familiar with it. I don't have to be a fan of it. I happen to have been into wrestling for a good amount of my childhood. Um, I actually have gone to multiple wrestling events when I was in high school. I haven't done it so much right now. But I have a big respect for it. I understand it. I understand what it's like to to really worry about the wrestlers and what they're doing for good reason. They're doing something super dangerous and it is entertaining as hell. But reading wrestling narratives, I'm, you know, I'm not reading wrestling books I or anything like that. I did not get this book just because I was like, oh, wrestling, pass. But then you think about something like Long Live Pro Wrestling, James sure. Hake, Scout Comics, outstanding comic book that isn't necessarily about the ring. It's about what happens outside the ring. And that's what comics do. They can, they can introduce any genre to you, any type of story, something that you may not be familiar with, something you may not even enjoy or relate to, but it's because of how it's written and, and the situations and the character development, the relationships with, between them, the horror sometimes, sometimes the, the crime. And it gets so intriguing that all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I think the take best, me to uh, the best WrestleMania. Stuff. Let's do it. For me, anyway, I find the best stuff when I take a chance. Like, I almost did not grab Crimson Cage, but because it's AWA, because I have promised myself at this point that I'm just going to get whatever they make, I took a, a chance on it. And AWA did that for me. When I saw Crimson Cage was on our, our list that you suggested, and, I re- and I'm like, all right, let me, let me find it out. You know, like uh, the summary, add to my pull list. And I'm like, oh, but it says AWA. Publishers, Scout has done that for me. Not everything that Scout does is like my favorite comic book, but they're consistently great comics but every publisher has comics that i'm just like really not into there's always like some redeeming factor to a degree but awa has positioned themselves to be a must read every single time if something seems interesting it's gonna be one of the best comics i'm reading that week they had another book option too after chariot by the way old haunts Ooh. Do we need to bring more awa to the mic comic fam let me know by commenting down below let me know in the chat are you reading AWA? Are you going to check out Crimson Cage? Are you going or watching WrestleMania this weekend? I don't know. I got to do some pressing, so I don't think I'm going to be doing that. But WrestleMania. WrestleMania. It's WrestleMania. Oh, geez. Let's do it. All right. Um, Put the... the, the ah, come on. see? There we go. I had Why? asked Ryan. I said, I need you to be a solid, Ryan. I need you to really help me out here. Um, Remind me that I need to do a mail call plug. So he's like, oh, what I'll do is I'll write it down. And I'll put it on the mic. And I'm like, haha, Ryan. Because you don't like, you know, bringing up plugs. You know, I tell you how you can support the show. We wanted to entertain you guys. But then I thought, you know what, Ryan? I kind of like it on the mic. So we're going to keep the mail call right there. That's going to be our plug. I'm just kidding. No, It'll fall. It's covered in butch hair. All right, take a look at this. We have the April mystery mail call that you can sign up for right here, right now. We are taking open enrollments. And if you sign up by the 15th, you will get guaranteed in your box one version, not both, of our Peach Momoko, Something is Killing the Children, issue number 21. Can I ask you? Erica Slaughter. What's up? the difference? The difference is the um, oh, the, the mask uh, and the, the accent, okay, I see the, the eyes, oh, everything. This is what I get from I, Are your eyes open, Ryan? No, apparently not. They look different to me, comic fam. They don't look different. That's they don't the look same. different? Corporate wants you to tell me what's the difference between. Uh, oh, I can't, yeah, I can't remember the meme. Yeah, that uh, Creed. Creed Ryan. Fire Guy Ryan Fire over here Fire trying Fire to do Fire office Fire references. Fire. I tried. All right, so one per box. We have Something is Killing Children, issue 21. Um, two different versions, one of which will be lower print. And you can always find our print counts on comictom101.com slash print counts. The box is 35 bucks plus shipping. And we ship it in a box with tracking, priority mail. And you know what? Shall we announce our second cover? Should we? I never know. I didn't find out what this. I never. This is the first time I saw this peach variant was when you made your Instagram post. Sometimes you tell me months in advance, like the Silver Surfer. And I'm, I'm going to keep it secret right now. Okay. I'm going to keep it secret right now. I um, also don't know what the other cover is. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I'm going to have to keep it secret because I actually didn't upload it. So, um, but, but what I can tell the comic fam is we do have a exclusive that has been dropped over on Whatnot that I will share with you soon. Um, that I never announced on YouTube, but we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. We are now talking about what I think is going to be <sighs> the next comic book 
collector's speculation opportunity. Everyone's trying to get up on the marketplace. Which blue key? Which blue chip keys are going to spike next? Which style of key is going to spike? Is it the villain versus villain? Uh, villain versus hero? Hero versus hero? Is it going to be the random superhero? Is is Puppet Master needing to be specced out right now? Do I need to get me an FF8? I did, by the way. Is Submariner coming? Like, there's oh. so many different, like, collectors paths that they take to try to figure out how to get ahead of the marketplace. You can download Key Collector Comics, Comic Tom 101. Uh, rather, use Code Tom 101 to unlock a free two-week subscription there. But I think I may have found the next one. And it's so early because it hasn't actually dropped yet that everybody watching here in the chat, we have almost 100 people here. Hit the like button. I need your support. I think I have found the next avenue. You're bouncing out of your seat, man. You can't even like contain yourself. It's crazy, man, because it, it's real. And I've I've known it was coming. I put I backed it. I put money towards it. Putting my money where my mouth is. I'm Same. actively part of this. You are too. And hearing that Ryan is part of this too, as a non I, collector you said of sorts. Puppet Master Keys. And I thought you meant the very bad horror movie Puppet Master. <laughs> I was like, are we are we specking on that movie now? What's happening? No, it's like, oh, no, no. The, the Fantastic Four guy. Fantastic with the, Four with the puppets. The clay. The clay. The, the, the magical Alicia clay. Masters or That's whatever right. her name yeah, is. Yeah, her her uh, stepfather. Yes, I know things. Yeah, we're going. We're we're getting into it, Comic Fan. We're taking you to Kirby days. No, no. By the way, oh my gosh, I believe it's twenty five years today. It's, it's a Kirby anniversary. It's of a Kirby. What? I think it's since since he passed. Oh. Yeah. So to the king, right? Amazing. Um. The best. Lift my Red Bull to you, sir. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, so we have what could be what we believe, what I'm almost certain, the next avenue for major collectibles to be outputted in our comic space that are going to be causing a ruckus on the scene. And it is called Substack. We're talking about <laughs> James Tyne in the fourth or... We have Jimmy a new T. Jimmy T. Ryan, you I, said you called him Jimmy I, T once, I and did. now every it's single my, time. It's my mafia brain, man. Dude, it's, if he every was in the mob, single Jimmy T. time I read a James Tynan book, I think Jimmy freaking T now. He's got a hard name, and that's honestly the whole reason Can you imagine? Substack has this name to begin with. Dude, people started calling Donny Cates Sir Cates and putting it in the back of the book. I mean, it's literally in Venom comics. You and can Thor. look in the back. In the letters pages of Thor. You're welcome, comic fam. In the letter pages, members, call <laughs> the creator. By a nickname we came up on our tiny little Don't show. Don't call him Jimmy T. But if people... You do, if you do, tell him it was Tom and not me who came up with it. I did not come up with Jimmy T. Me I either. will not take credit for that. Oh, goodness. But Ryan, you said it, and I've heard it catch on just a little bit, and now you've uh, definitely messed up my brain, my noggin. I'm calling him Jimmy T. We're talking about James Tynan the Fourth's Substack today. We're going to go through what is going on on Substack and why you need to seriously consider joining. I have backed full level, as have you. Correct. Ryan don't collect comics very much, comic fam. Like, you're a reader. I'm a reader. Above all. But you, you got some silver. You do have some keys. You sure. are after some comics. But... Early stages, not as much of a priority. But you're buying some variants too, man. I've been, I'm shopping with you too. But right. throwing down the amount of money that it costs for a sub stack says something here that both of us are, are, are the as amount invested of money as we are. That it can cost. That's one of the things we got to get into too. There's there's options. True. There's options. Okay, so let's Ugh. let's dive into sub stack because what's going on over there is a essentially a Patreon version. Uh, it's essentially Patreon, but for comic book creators and professionals. Sure. That's one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, sure. it's a, it's a pretty easy way to describe Substack it. Substack has a whole bunch of like, there's journalists on there and, and there's all kinds of other writers, but yeah, comics is a, is a big, they've made a really big push into comics this year specifically. There has been an entire like wave of individuals that have gone over there. Um, celebrities in the comic space, all doing it together. And it's given me some serious image vibes. It does have echoes of, of that movement from like 30 years ago. Dude. Roughly. Jimmy T straight up like, I'm going to stop writing Batman. Hold up, Sandman. Hold up. Okay, hold up. I'm going to finish writing Sandman and then that. I'm out. Yeah. You know, like, uh, okay, okay. So so that's what's happening over there. And I want to go into 
what Substack is, because everyone needs to understand what's taking place. It's different per Substack creator, but they're offering valuable services, entertainment, and exclusivity for a monthly payment or depending on what tier you sign up for, you know, bigger things. I believe most of them have separate payment tiers. Yes. If you, if you want to, you know, depending on how hard you want to go in. Yeah. And I suggest you go hard on some of these. Uh, yeah. Ryan. For, for me anyway. Yep. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Jimmy T. Uh, Department <laughs> of Truth and Nice House on the Lake are my number one and number two comics right now. And, He's just my favorite writer. So I figured it made sense to check out his sub stack and see what he's got there. And then it's so good, man. I'm out 250 bucks, but it's okay. So, uh, it, I, okay. We're going to get into it and we're going to show you what's going on because bear with us. Comic ooh, fam. Ooh, that looks um, can you, okay. You share your screen. I, I'm going to share the screen, Ryan. Okay. I didn't even, Oh, uh, but you know what? I'm not going to bring up the actual, like, cause I'd, I'd have to log into mine to see right. all, all his stuff. But, um, first off, Let's walk through what Substack is, okay? We have a bunch of different creators over there, and what they're doing is building a community, something we have been begging the comic industry for four years to do. You specifically. Since on day this one. Channel. Yeah. Have. Dude, people have their commentary. They're, they're like, oh, this is why comics aren't performing the way they should, and this is, this is the reason. It's because of this silly thing that happened in one comic of the 400 that came out, and it's ruining the industry. No. No, we're in a, a new era. The internet's a thing, and you, you got to try harder. And the way that you, in the form of trying harder, you can't rely on publishers to do your marketing, and you can't be Alan Mooring it and be a recluse. You got to put yourself out there. You got to use your Instagram. You got to use your Twitter. And I was saying that four years ago. Yeah. Dude. Scroll back on the channel. It's scroll there. back. During a time where these creators weren't doing it, four years go by, they're, they're there. Some of them use it better than others, but they're there. Well, you got to go further. You got to make content. You got to like start a podcast. You got to do something. And what happened over the last few years? Not taking credit for like them doing it. I'm just saying I want, I see it and I want more of it. You got the Donny Cates, Ryan Stegman podcast. Oh, so let, me, let me rephrase that. It's Ryan Stegman's podcast. It is. You have Ryan Stegman's podcast. Um, Mostly always. Stegman and Friends Cates. featuring Donny Cates and other creators. Dude, Scotty Young's been on there. It's a great Middle West podcast that they've released. Um, you have Johnny DeJardins doing live sketches on his live feed yep. for his community on Instagram. Someone who has said on the mic, self-described caveman, does not use the internet or social media. There? Yeah. He kind of looks like one. He's got the beard, right? Isn't that him? He looks He's like a badass, dude. Yeah, and the hair. Dude, he works on cars, man. He's like a mechanic. Oof. It's pretty cool, right? That makes sense. Yeah. All right. So you got to like step out of your comfort zone. You got to do stuff, right? You know, grow your community, but like cater to them, right? They're buying your stuff. You know, how do you expect people to know what's going on? If not even the publisher is really marketing stuff for you, probably because they have like a hundred things that are coming out over the next couple months and they can't market at all. It's not like there's a well of money pumping out commercials, you know? So anyways, Substack has been created and essentially has created a platform to force all the creators to do this themselves by just giving them some assistance. Here's the place to do it. Here are the different tiers you can do. Make your people happy. And that's what we have. And we're going to start off by J with James Tyne in the fourth because he has come on the scene and just killed it. He's ranked number two is what my screen shows for all of comics on Substack for good reason. This is someone who, when the email comes out, I know when it's going to come out. And that's really what this is. You're signing up for emails. At the bare core of all of this Substack stuff, you put your email address in here and you get emails from James Tynan or right. whoever, you know, whatever Substack you're signing up for. That's right. You can do that for free. You don't have to pay anything. You just get the weekly updates that he does and maybe some teases of some of the things that you could get if you, if you increased your subscription and, you know, started paying every month. So I want to go through some of the things that are free here. You can subscribe. Actually, I'm going to bring uh, James Jimity. I just love this logo, too. I mean, it's got a great, great logo. So this is uh, Empire of the Tiny Onion, right? You can subscribe to Substack for free. You will get the tiny updates, the oddly pedestrian life of Christopher Chaos, which we're going to talk about briefly, um, and to access some sample previews and member-only content. Now, Member-only content for free on, on Substack should be enough for you to sign up regardless. If you're a fan of James Tynan, 
If you're a fan of something is killing the children, if you're a fan of Department of Truth, if you're a fan of Wind, if you're like the list goes on and doesn't end. I'm not going to sit here and just talk about every comic book he's doing. However, this is where a lot of news breaks. How do yeah. you think something is killing the children came on spec radar? You think Key Collector was called up by James? No. They follow the empire of the tiny onion and you can too. This is how you can get up on the collector's market. What's to come. But also if you're a diehard fan, like we are of this writer, you get the information directly from the source. And he's actually like, he's a good super writer. entertaining. Yeah, he's obviously a good writer. And like, even that boils his down newsletters are awesome. Newsletters, not which just is weird, scripts. but I love it. Yeah. It's, it's interesting to read blog posts effectively from him every week, even like a week or two ago, this uh, newsletter is where he broke the news of the Sandman variants. That's right. The variant covers for issue one that are coming out soon. Mm -hmm. He was allowed to announce those covers first on his newsletter, which is which was cool to see. That's Even right. I'm not the biggest Sandman fan in the world. All right. So I want to make sure to point out here because we are going through the Substack and we're going through like, this is how you can sign up. This isn't an ad for Substack. No. Now I'm trying to get the community on board to something because I see the value in it. And I see that this is absolutely going to be one of the futures of comic books. And even me as a big time, a big time Tynan fan, uh, I knew this existed for a few months, but I was not familiar with what Substack was or what it meant or what you do to find it or to get into it. So I just wrote it off. I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm just not going to do it. I'll read what I'll read Department of Truth and I'll be happy. Right. So this is not hard. We have the basic membership, which is seven bucks a month, or you can save $9 a year by signing up for 75 bucks. There is a seven day free trial and you get access to everything. Every comic onion drops and every post on Substack. So let's talk about what that is because okay. you're not just getting newsletter newsletter updates from the creator. That's what James has been doing with his newsletter since prior to Substacks doing comics, you know, and, and doing yeah, everything. He's had a newsletter through Substack for a couple of years, which is great to go back and read. Actually, there's a lot of like cool teases and hints for stuff that we know now that he was just teasing to people a couple of years ago. If you're a fan of Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman and Venom, go through Spotify, pull up the early podcasts, and you literally listen to Donny Cates and Ryan talk about the creative process like the month after the comic's release, sometimes sooner. Tease, absolute carnage before it came out. It's just fun to go back and look yeah, at it. I like it, doing that. That's it, weird. Yeah, I like doing it while enjoying the comic, but I also like going back to it because yeah. sometimes, you know, there's a lot going on, and then you're like, oh, wait a minute. Wow, that's what he was thinking there? It, gives, it makes you look at everything differently because... Pointing out stuff that you may not know. Hey, this panel was changed. Why? Well, we couldn't show that in that way, so we changed it to this. But this is how Ryan initially drew it. Those kind of things are happening on these old podcasts. You're getting that through James Tynan's old letters, too. Like, sure. you know, you're going back in time here. So it's, a, it's an awesome thing. But there are original comics that are debuting on Substack before they get released in print. Yes, and that's like the main attraction of, of this platform. That is what you are getting at the base right here. Like seven bucks, like when you really, when you're paying monthly for this, that is the heart of the value. Yes. You know what I mean? Like that right there is what got me interested. However, onion drops. That's a whole different category. Mm. Well, it says here you get access to onion drops. You do. However... You get early access, which you're going to need. Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, no, they, you don't need it. I think you're going to need early access to these it's onion drops for some of these. I can speak from experience. It helped me a lot last month, but you don't need it. Uh, if you want to get everything, you're going to need it. They set some aside for, for, the, they for do? the normies. Okay. Yeah. They just give us okay. premium access. So let me show you guys this here because um, there is a shop. Did you know that there is something is killing the children merch that exists right now? Did you know that you can buy Department of Truth merch right now? Enamel pins of some of your favorite characters, Erica Slaughter, right now. Different bandanas. Everybody's buying the same bandana from Boom Studios website and or eBay. James has one. It's through Substack. Also, there are variant comic drops happening on Substack. Not just by James Tynan. It's also happening elsewhere. We're going to get to the, the Donny Kate substack another day. But these variants are what I was talking about. There is a value to being able to grab these variants by having a membership that I think is yet to be determined, but we know it's high. 
because there is something is killing the children variants that are onion drop exclusives. If you want to get this variant that James Tynan created, the help of an artist, but like put it together, wrote the thing and doing the distribution, you have to be a member. And I think this right here is the next wave of hyper collectible. I don't know if they're going to be expensive. It's looking good so far, but you know, I can't call that. I can't predict yeah. the future. But what I can say is my money is betting that it's going to be a banger. These are limited. You have to jump through a couple hoops and only people like the comic fam who join us on a podcast like this on a random Tuesday, March 29th, will know that there is three days left for you to secure a upcoming Something is Killing the Children exclusive that has pre-sold for $400 hot damn. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how far back I want to go and explain this a little, a little more. Well, I'm going to show him the merch page. Why don't we talk about that first? Okay. This is, this. uh, the onion drop, which you mentioned before is the name he gives to monthly themed merch drops. He's done one of them so far last month for something is killing the children. 21 and at the dude, start of March. I missed it. I don't know how I missed this one, but by the time I found out they were sold out. Correct. So as a member, I still missed out because I wasn't quick enough. That's how fast these are selling. That's an important clarification. As a paid member, you get access, but you don't get a guarantee that you will get this cover here, this wraparound variant that we're looking at here. That something is killing the children. Michael Dialinus. I can't remember how to pronounce his name. It's the artist from Wind. That's right. Did a wraparound cover for something is killing the children. 21. It's gorgeous. I believe this was limited to a thousand. Mm -hmm. 20 bucks. It, yeah, it cost $20. I was able to snag two of them. I might, I might give you one. Dude, I definitely I want know. one, man. I want one, but notice here you have different, you have a bandana you can get, you can get, um, actually I just picked up the shirt. You did? Me too. I had to. We'll have matching shirts. Dude, where else are you going to get an Erica Slaughter shirt? looks like, you know. Actually drawn dude. by Werther de la Dera. There we go. You got the pins like you were talking about. There's the Order of St. George, the tattoo. So like so for, cool. for cosplay purposes. Am I lame that I want one of those tattooed? I feel like a I'm, permanent I, one. Kind of. I feel little, like I think it's too soon. What you should do is I get think I need teeth, to wait the teeth tattooed on your face. On my face. That's way cooler. That is way cooler. Okay. So, yes, there is. There he is. Jimmy himself. Jimmy himself killing the game. Okay. So, there are these drops here. And um, the next one is happening this, like next week, a week from, a week from t tomorrow. So, $250 is the top tier. And that gets you early access to everything. And that sounds like a whole lot of money because it is. It I'm is. not downplaying how much money that is. But when you talk about this being a yearly thing, you either pay $75 a year at best, right? That's the cheapest. Correct. You know, you pay up front, right? Nine bucks a month. Or seven a month. Saves or, nine yeah, bucks. Yeah. yeah. Seven bucks a month or, or, or 75 bucks. 250 a year to get access to be. Um, the first come, what am I saying here? Um, it access to be early access, to early access, front of the line to get drops. And the gold, something is killing the children variant is going to be dropping on Monday. I know the comic releases tomorrow. Something is killing children 21. I don't know when those get sent out, um, but everybody who is subscribed at the $250 level automatically gets one of those in included. You don't have to like time your alarms and make it to the store to purchase one in time. You get one. Just okay. for being signed up. So that right there is happening. Pre-sold for 400 bucks. I'm not saying it's going to be worth 400 bucks when all these go out. Um, it may be worth 150, 200. It may be worth more. There may be a ton of damages and maybe even worth more than that. Who knows? That's true. But for a book that is coming out the gate, pre-selling for 400, it tells me that the value is there and that you can pay one time a good amount of money, but get access to a bunch of exclusive stuff before anyone else, as well as a guaranteed book that is absolutely gorgeous. It is a pretty book. I wonder if I can show it here. Without doing our whole list. Uh, I kind of screwed up and didn't put it on here, but I, I wonder if I can get it. Um, but can what you else? Copy? We you can copy right there. Does that work? Uh, well, we'll see what I can do here while, while you chat about what else is going on on this. Well, I just want to point out this cover is drawn by artist Nick Robles. I believe is his name. He's uh, he's going to be doing six of these exclusive Onion Club top tier Tynan memberships. He's going to be making six gold foil variants for various James Tynan comics over the course of 2022. And this is the first one that's coming out. And I believe next month, next week, I should say for April, we're getting one of these done by this artist for Sandman, the new Sandman series that James is going to be writing. I'm excited about that. 
and then whatever four other variants that we'll also be getting. They're all virgin covers. They're all gold foil. Yeah, here we go. This is Erica Slaughter with a chainsaw. Very badass. And this is only going to Onion Club members, which is the name of his top tier subscription tier. So I'm getting one. You're I'm, getting one. I'm also getting one. And, and they have a couple days left to sign up. That is true. Uh, he made a post recently that says, if anybody wants one of these covers and has not signed up for the highest tier of his Substack, you can still secure one of these if you subscribe to the Onion Club membership by uh, midnight on April 3rd. There on we the go. The 4th is when the new, the new stuff drops. So you'll be SOL if you wait till the 4th. Okay, so let's get into it, man, because we, we told you about... The spice, the the variants, the, the the gold variants. There's the membership card. We didn't get into that aspect. Oh, that's there's right. A, there's a whole layer of like con benefits that you get too, which that's right. is is a whole. It's it's. Have fun. you gotten your card yet? No, I believe it's going to come with the with gold the gold. Variant. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. All right, yeah, you're going to get a card you're and get a physical a f- like Onion Club membership card, which is cool. That's just a cool. Idea. I want to have a membership card, but this card yeah. allows you to get like one free signing at every convention. If you flash it at at his at his booth, you'll, you'll get a, like a pat on the back. I'm sure. And you get a. Uh, <laughs> I want a. I want a picture of you and me next to James, holding sure that little card. That. Yeah, he'll love that. Come on, man. You so get cool. you get a free graded uh, graded signature. You don't have to pay the fee to. Right. How much does that normally cost? Uh, well, you're gonna pay for the grade. However, a lot of creators now, especially when they're working with a third party, they do a upcharge if you're getting it graded. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. But it is what it is. Like a CGC witness signature? It's like the CGC witness is going to charge, like, like the, the signature series is more expensive, right? Sure. So you're already paying an inflated amount through CGC. All right, Mr. Uh, Fire Guy Ryan, I really want you to sign my book. I'm going to be signing it. And typically you charge $5 for a signature because like, hey, you're at a convention and you right. want to like support the creator. Oh, but wait. It's going to go get graded immediately. It's going to go get graded immediately. We know that because there's a person watching you. 20 bucks for you. Ooh. Yeah, that ooh is what all your fans feel like, comic fam yeah. uh, creators. Just like just throwing that out there for you. However, it is what it is. And if you are part of the Substack community, you don't have to worry about that. If you're part of the Onion Club with the membership card. Thank you. Be part of the Onion Club. That's cool. I love you get, it. You get one of those waived. And like you were saying, for signatures, if he charges like $5 a book for raw books, and if you let That's you, free? If you that's, let you, that's crazy. It's, that's not, awesome. it's not waived. That price isn't waived. But... um. If he signs, if he'll sign like three books, this mm-hmm. is the example he gave on his site. If he'll sign three, if you flash the card, you get double. So oh. you, can, you can get six. Okay, so still signature. I believe you still pay. I'm not but sure. yeah, it probably for is. ungraded books. All and right, there's very also cool. like exclusive Onion Club merch that he's gonna have at booths. I would mm-hmm. like to like see an example of this. I, I haven't gone to a con yet where he's been. I think he was at New York. Okay, it says here, um, one free graded signature per signing session, double the limit of free ungraded signatures. Oh. He may not have. He may not call. May may not charge individuals to Maybe. to sign. Classy move, James. That's you know who does that. Matt Wagner. Yeah. Mike Mignola. Oh, yeah. the free version. I'm thinking of people who yeah. I've had to pay to get. No, 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 from. no, <laughs> no. Creators that are like, yeah. no, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna charge my my community who support me and That's help me up. get here. You consider doing a donation or something, you know? And they typically team up with some dope uh, nonprofits. But anyways. The greats have a tendency to do that. I was just pointing that out there. And I got someone's got to do it. Exclusive Onion Club merch at his booth. So you're actually going to be able to buy stuff at a convention that other people can't. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is what it's about. Because this Losers. is what, this is what yeah. I've been like. This is it right here, comment fan. This is so dope. They should um, let you cut to the front of the line. <laughs> it's like a fast pass. <laughs> oh my god, I would no. piss so many people off. I would. I'm coming, Tom. Get out of my way, Jimmy. I got yeah. my card. <laughs> All right. Um, two day early access to onion drops, which is what we're talking about. Like when that um, wraparound cover got debuted and sold out in 45 minutes, 45 minutes. Yep. Yeah. So you get uh two day early access so you can get the book. So that, you're only fighting with the that other onion club alone people. makes it worth it. And then other special gifts. Okay. So anyways, I think that's a pretty damn good plug for jams. Shall we keep it going by some, talking about good perks, but we got to get into the actual books. Yeah, you don't have this to get is the, all of the things that we just said. We've just been talking the onion club. Stuff. It's just the onion club, but the real value in this whole thing, you can secure it for just seven for dollars. seven bucks, not 250. You get comic books digitally before they become printed. And it's awesome. There's some really cool stuff on here. If you're, if you're a fan of it's really good, we have similar taste to James himself. Yep. He's really into aliens and horror stuff, which Tom and I are both big fans of. I low-key think he believes in aliens. Uh, don't you? 
I do. I don't know. I think you, there's aliens out there. You think that? Do you think that they've? they've okay. Okay. Let's take this back a little bit. Table. Okay. So okay. Well, first off. Uh, we're kind of kind of moving a little too far ahead All over here. The place. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about the first book. Did you see what I named the folder? No. Jimmy T. Okay. That's right. I, I, I told <laughs> uh, you, man, it's on the mind. So we have Blue Book. Okay, so let's just get this on the screen first, my brother. All right, we're not messing around here today. Comment fam, hit the like button. Slap the subscribe button. We're talking funny books. We're talking expensive paper, affordable paper, sometimes digital paper. Digital paper. That's right. The it's new like, name of this podcast. It's like crypto, yo. Let's do it. Just like crypto. Just like crypto. Okay, the we have dog. the blue book. Okay, so this is so cool. This right here is a little email you get. Right. Right. At least this. This. This is what. Okay. If you were subscribed like we were for the last how how long has it been, dude? I've been on for almost two months. Almost two months. I think I got it right when he started. I got it on my birthday. So you've been going before me. I got a it couple fe- months before February second. Dude, I'm really mad that I missed that wraparound cover. I digress. So. These comics that are being produced exclusively for the Substack community, the Onion Club, is... These aren't just for the Onion Club. This is for everybody. Onion Club's the top tier, guys. Man, these are for free? These aren't for free, but Onion Club is specifically the $250. Oh, oh thank you. Okay. Yeah. That, that's the name of it. I got to get my terminology right, Kyle. I've just I, been calling I just paid, and I'm just getting it all. Exactly. And I'm loving every second of it's it. Less hassle that way. I'm going to be so decked out and all my... Erica Jimmy Slaughter T swag. swag. I'm gonna have a <laughs> Department of Truth hat, Erica Slaughter shirt, bandana. Strutting around with that membership card. All my pins. All your pins. Yeah, I'm gonna go. All right, that's what we should do. We, we should deck pins. ourselves out and go see Jimmy T. Oh man, just be all blinged out. All right, anyways. So, anyways, wait. So the comics are free on his Substack. You don't have to pay anything. I believe you can read the first chapter of Blue Book for free. Okay, see that's what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. So the membership, the the lowest tier, gets you access to all the comics, Everything. and that's okay. Yes. So I am I am talking yeah. about it right. There. You're right. But it's just the name of the club. That's for the 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 high rollers. Okay, so we have for seven bucks, you get these emails throughout the month, and it's like, yo, you have a new part of your comic book that's ready. Read it. Here you go. Here it is. We have the blue book. James Tynan, Michael Avon Oming, co-creator Powers, does the art here. And it all is it is it is all black, white, and blue, like you can see here. Did you hear what he just said? Let me bring this back here. Did you hear what he just said? Co-creator of Powers. Powers, yes. Very they're cool not, cartoony this, art style. They are like, they're going in. He's not just getting like He's his getting neighbor's the, kid to draw this for him. No, for it's crazy, man. This is like freaking really, really high level, like very respected creators. Did you get, you got actual panels from the inside of this. Of course okay. Did, okay. Dude. Cause this is a really cool looking book. And what is this about my brother? Uh, project blue book. It's a true story. Yes. Project blue book is, it refers to like the government. I think it's a department of like the air force or something where they would like take UFO encounter reportings. When people call in to report, Hey, I just saw a flying saucer. They would write all this stuff down and keep it, tr- keep track of it in project blue book was the name of it. And that is the name that they are using for this. Series, the first 10 chapters are one season, which just wrapped up. This first season of Project Blue Book is about Barney and Betty Hill, who were like one of the first, they were the first like couple, I think, to get like abducted by aliens. And they told their story. And this in the 60s, correct. This happened in the 60s. And this series, so we tell you that their, their story in the most accurate way way possible without like fluffing it up or embellishing it and making it like a yeah. Hollywood. No hyperbole. This is like very, very rough, real storytelling here. That's why I, I really um, was excited about this. And I love UFO stuff, man. Do you believe in UFOs? Like, do I, you think I, that yeah, we sure do you believe it would be been visited? How many? I don't know if we've been b- visited or not. Probably Dude, when I was um, in my early 20s. Aliens. aliens. Right, of course we have. We already I mean, have. I mean, like, I grew up in a pretty religious household as an as a young adult. Went to college and kind of changed up my beliefs a little bit. Don't want to get into that too much, but there was a point. I don't necessarily believe it as much anymore, but I was convinced that we were visited. That your ancient, dad was an alien. That my dad, yeah, he came from another planet. Oh, Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, right? No, 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 no. That he that that we were uh, visited by ancient astronauts, dude. You ever seen mm. Nazca lines, dude? Primos, man. It's AWA. <laughs> you reading that? <laughs> you reading Primos, dude? Yeah. You're like ancient aliens, man. Cousins. Mm. Mm. <laughs> For real, though. But yeah, man, it's like just a mathematical probability. Oh yeah, With that there's one planet in the entire universe that but, has anything alive on it. Okay, so but it's a difference saying that there's life out there versus that life has 
visited us. Visit us, us because sure. that's two different things. Because okay. now you're, the odds are extrapolating entirely not in our favor because they have to be able to travel. It has to be at the right time. Is this, you know, dude, Star Wars took place in a galaxy far, far away a long time ago. But it's true. It all happened. You see what I'm saying? The so, like, real. so what are the odds that that would take place at a time that we're living right now or in the last thousand, two thousand years? I'd be willing years. To, to hear an argument for we have or have not actually been visited, but I believe. I believe there's a, there's but something. you believe this is our life. I mean, it seems like the high probability. I mean, Tom DeLonge believes it. And if you listen to Blink-182, you know, you believe aliens exist. That's how we do it. That's how it works. So um, we have a, <laughs> a retelling of this tale. Of the Tom DeLonge story. This is actually all about Tom DeLonge. This is the Blink-182 What's my age motion again? comic. Okay. I don't remember, man. Um, so we have Blue Book. And this thing is outstanding. I've said outstanding too many times let's, on this podcast. Let's show it, man. Let's I change. Get back oh, into I got, this. Th- let me think of another name, another uh, word to describe this. It's riveting. Yes. It's very enjoyable. It is unidentifiable. There and flying. And flying. Saucers. Let's do it. We have Blue Book. Um, ooh, look at that. Classy. Yeah, I had to. I had to pull that. Nice. Ah. Oh, Sorry, okay. James. I'm going to show some of the pages of your this book on your chapter Substack. One, but- chapter one's free. That chapter Any, free. So anybody can read this whole chapter. Right so we're now. not doing anything wrong. We are not breaking the law. No, breaking the law. That's okay. I don't break know. The law every day. I got to look up the Substack you laws. Break one law in Washington day. State. It could be different per state. So did you read any of like the Wolverine, Black, White, and Blood, and Blood, or the Deadpool, Black, White, and Red, or Superman, Wonder mm-hmm. Woman, Blue, or Gold, Yellow, and Gold, or whatever? Like those weird color books. Yeah, yeah. The Gold one specifically was was uh, a lot of fun. And this is you know this is the same kind the of same, thing. They limit their color blue. palette. Look, I totally told you. The waitress down there, she's giving them a, a stink eye. Yeah, that's right. So we have a, a couple. This is in the 60s. In the 60s. They're they're eating dinner. They're on vacation. And they just they want to check out. They've been working hard. And I think the, the this is one of the creepiest parts of the whole thing. Not the scene, but the, the setup. These are two individuals who are hardworking working. And, you know, t- hardworking There's people. There's some narration that happens on, like, the next page that gets into, like, their backstory and what they do with their lives to kind of show you that these are not two people who go to UFO conventions all the time. Read that. Oh, okay. Let's do it. Yeah, we're going to, we're, go- we're taking you it. in. We're taking you in, Kong right. fam. Just, just buckle up. Let's do this. <laughs> I don't think that song has ever, been, that button on the soundboard has never been more appropriate than right. right now. It was Tuesday, September 19th, 1961. When Betty and Barney Hill began the long drive home to Portsmouth, New Hampshire, from their modest holiday in Montreal, the couple had heard that a hurricane was making its way up the coast, and having already exceeded their budget for the vacation, they determined it was in their best interest to make the drive home overnight. So this story takes place of what they experienced overnight in the aftermath, which is a event that would change their lives forever in the most upsetting of ways. Because there, it, it doesn't, I don't want to, I don't want to get into anything else with this book. I want to, I want to limit it to just the first issue where but you right have here you get them to see, driving. You get to see the explanation of saying like, he's a professor or something. They do a lot of volunteer oh, work. Oh, thank you. So this, this right here, but this is the part that made me feel eerie. Yeah. Because these are seemingly not individuals that would lie. You got to think you're in the 1960s. Um, you have a relationship status that you already have to kind of be delicate about. Unfortunately, you have a civil rights activist as well as a, Oh, they're um, both. Yeah. They both volunteered a lot in the civil rights movie. And this is a true story. These were real people. Yeah. These are real people. They, like, and, and working for like a, like a major, he works for the post office and yeah, volunteers post. for the NAACP. Yeah. Like these are they're normal, real people. They're not like, like I was saying before, they're not like fringe lunatics who, who believe in UFOs already. They're not inclined. They're rational, skeptical people is probably how they would phrase it. Like the, the safest way to say it. They're not somebody who, who had the tattoos. I believe on their on their forearms. You know, they're not like crazy UFO. This is people. before that. He you does know? not believe in UFOs. Like it, the, UFOs not, weren't even really yeah, that yeah. prominent in culture at this point. Like it were, they were starting at this point. It just doesn't make sense why these events would take place unless they were a lying or what's up, Butch? Or Butch? Or Butch? Right? It just doesn't. It doesn't feel like. I think that's a, a great thing that James was able to communicate in this comic book is that you feel like this could be entirely plausible. And if this was the, 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 the way that the narrative played out in the 60s, you would believe these people. You get the strong sense, at least I did, that they are, are not lying. They're driving home. 
he he would drive upwards of uh, sixty minutes to and from his work. To, you know, to get there. Like he, he, this is someone who was on a grind. They needed a break. They didn't want uh they didn't want to add to their schedule. They didn't want to experience anything supernatural. Just trying to get home and they trying start. to avoid a hurricane. So they're driving through the middle of the night, which already sucks. She sees something. Yep. And what they see. That's great. Is so damn creepy. It's unsettling. Mind you, comic fam, I got to bring you back for a second. You're just chilling. You know, it's I'm pressing books. Ride. No, I'm, ta- I'm talking oh, about me now. You, okay. I'm back home. You're you. I'm doing stuff. I just got done doing comic stuff. I just I got to worry about a video later on. Lifting weights. Just lifting some weights, yeah, you know. Deal. Getting, getting, you know, got to get like that Gem Mint on. It's your boy Gem Mint. Shout out Gem Mint it's Fitness. Boy, Gem Mint. Gem Mint Fitness is, is his Instagram on there. There you go. Um, but no. You get an email from Jimmy T. Mm-hmm. You stop what you're doing. You're like, oh, wait, there's another chapter. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And you go to your computer, you go to your phone, go to your tablet, whatever it is. You know, it depends on the day. And you pull it up and you get to join this world again. You get to like see the past again. You get Little to relive something. Chapters. These individual chapters are not very long. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't take that long to read, which makes it kind of more fun. And they come out every two weeks. The final one just came out recently. So this, this chapter one, this season it's one all of there. is all done. It's all there for you to read. You can read this entire book, and these are coming to press. You're going to be able to buy these, too. Someday. Yeah. One of these has been announced for press, and is actually in the current previous guide right now. One yeah. of his other books that we're going to talk about in a minute. But So excited. Yeah. This one isn't even my favorite comic, fam. Yeah, it is so damn good. Uh, okay. Did you so, see the trailer for Jordan Peele's new movie? Yes. Okay. Nope. There's, there is a strong lack of the answer. alien UFO stuff. It's going to be so good, and This man. scratches that itch for me right now. Look at this. That's so creepy. It's so creepy and it's so good. And this is just something that you just get emailed to you and say, here you go. It's ready. Happy Friday. Thanks for your $7 this month. Exactly. It's a comic and a half comic fam. It's yeah. A comic and a half. Not even two full price $4 comics. Okay. I'm not going to say anything else. You got to cool. go and just check this out. It is so much damn fun. It's, it's very creepy. It's very strange. And there will be a season two at some point. Yeah. Featuring, follow, I'm assuming, following a completely different, true UFO encounter. Um, all available and um, ready for your reading pleasure on James Tynan's Substack. But that's not all. That's true. Because we another have another book. book. Is this the book that is uh, being printed? This one is coming to print first. Yes. Get this on your pull list. This book is really good. Not only do you sign up for the membership and you read this comic, get the comic in print. It's that good. Let's talk about The Closet. It's a three-issue series. Two of them have already been released on his Substack, So we're two-thirds of the way done with this book. And it's really good. It's very, very unsettling. Based off of a recurring nightmare that he himself had, that James had as a child. What? Yeah. I did not see that newsletter. You did not see that part? I did not see that part. Oh, man. There was... I think I just jumped into the book, man. When you see O'Halloran on there... I got dig into the archives, man. Ugh. I don't but know. yes, uh, did you say O'Halloran? Yeah. Chris O'Halloran, the colorist from Ice Cream Man. Hell yeah. Those gorgeous pastels that he always uses. Dude. Well, uh, I'm a fan. AWA makes a book. I know I'm going to like it. O'Halloran's coloring a book. <laughs> I'm going to like it. Also, Gavin Fullerton does the art, you know, the pencils in here. So, so good. It's a weird mix of like cute and adorable, but also very foreboding. Oh. It's, it's to say the mix. least, man. This is a relationship book, ah, dude. The closet. Ah. Okay, look at this. This book makes me happy, dude. This is like when we're reading this, the whole time I was thinking, I love being alive right now. <laughs> and this time for comic books are a thing. Like this is, this is good stuff, man. This is good stuff. Um, okay, let, let's bring it to the screen. Look at this, the closet. We got a child holding a doll. He's good at designing dolls. That's you know? a good point. Octo from Something Selling the Children. Yeah. There you go. So we have another one here. I don't know why this is. There it is. Okay. So we have the closet. We have a, so a child honest. and a doll. So issue one. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a, a long st- issue. Too, it's a long way. issue. And it's um, the thing that I enjoy about this book is that it's scary. It's gonna It's, it's unsettling. It's, it's going to make you feel um, uneasy. Absolutely. It's got some vibes of a uh, nice house on the lake to me a little bit. Because it's a little dreary. Feeling. You know going in that something spooky is going to happen. Right. But it takes its time to get there and like reels you in with the human side of it. Look at those colors. 
Yeah, that's that's, that's Chris. Him. Yeah, that's Chris. That's Chris. All right, so we have um, a comic book here. That yes, it's a horror comic. And it's about a child who may or may not have something in his closet. In his closet. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. You don't need to know. Probably clothes. I assume there's something malicious in there as well, but he could have clothes and toys. It is Jimmy T. Yeah, exactly. It is Jimmy T. Who knows? You know, it's it's a horror book. So um, what we can't say is that this child is not safe. It's worst case scenario. And we have a father who's just not his making name is Tom. the best decisions. And his name is Tom. That's unfortunate. It he's really not a, is. He's not a good guy. Hey, I don't have any kids, man. So This book makes maybe. me very grateful to not have children. <laughs> that it's, might not be the best thing to say or put out no, in the world. It, No, it's like, hey, for those, I'm not someone who's... who's I'm good, not qualified. In, in, interested, you know? In, in, I'm not in, interested in or that. qualified. I could not for, and should not raise a child. For those of you who don't know, I grew up with uh, little children. My, uh, my, my father remarried when I was like 10 years old. So all my siblings are very young. And I was part of all of that growing up. Like, you know, did everything but change diapers. Ooh. I did everything but change yes. diapers. But like, you know, putting my sister to sleep at night, making sure that you're doing everything right, feeding, uh, rocking in the, in, the, in the chair. I did all of that stuff, making sure she had her Elmo on, on, the, on rewind a hundred times. Like I went through all like of that. Like a VHS. That. Okay. No, just everything. Gotcha. And it's like you have to, it's the kids, if they find a movie they like, they want to watch it over and over and over again. In retrospect, I feel like that's the easy stuff, especially when you get to the stuff well, that goes on in this book. It's the older stuff, man. I was there for that, some of that too. But like this right here is, is the, uh, is the, the difficulties. Bottom. You know, once you hit to age four, things start getting kind of, kind of, uh, you kind of get tired. You know, it's, it's years of, of, do, of doing the hard work and the balance of a relationship with your significant other, your wife. Or your, your 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 partner, whatever it is, and raising a, a child and doing it to the best of your ability, it's very taxing. And we are finding Tom, not me, different Tom, different Tom, also with glasses, also with glasses, yes, and a little scruff, yeah, it's okay, unlike Tom, unlike me. So, um, he is struggling. This is the first page, right? Yeah, yeah he's, he's in a bar drinking by himself. That's not right. having a good time. James does that really well. Um, first page, let me show you what this is all going to be about. This dude's. This see. one is not available for free for the closet. You have to be a subscriber to get this. So oh. with the samples that we have here have no dialogue on them, right? right. Or right. at least this first page doesn't. It's it has dialogue. Does it? It does have dialogue. Oh. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Jimmy T. It's but worth you basically, it. you get this shot, this scene of him drinking alone at a bar. And throughout his conversation with the bartender, you find out that the husband here, the father, Tom, he is avoiding this situation at home right now. He is he is stalling for time. They are packing up to move out of their house, and he has been sent out to go buy more tape for boxes. And he's he's going to tell her a lie and say the first store he went to was out of tape. It's a weird excuse, but he's going to use that time to go get drunk at a bar and complain. That's right. He's, he's doing stuff that he thinks in his, in his head— Hey, you know what? We need space. This is a good reason. It's a white lie. But those types of things build up. And if you're doing that constantly, you're just, you're, you're doing something super damaging to your relationship. And he's yeah. feeling that burden, which is why he is at a bar. It's why he's drinking. And this whole book, yes, it's about something in the child's closet that he's terrified of. It's about something supernatural, maybe. I don't want to give it away, but it's also about relationships. It's about that struggle of holding it together. This is a three member family, right? You have a mother, father, and a like, young son, and they are very fractured. This kid is very traumatized. He sees a monster in his closet and his parents don't believe him because he's, he's a four year old. He, every four year old says there's a monster in my closet. I'm scared of the dark, yada, yada. Nobody believes him. And he's getting mad at his son. He, yeah. He's, he's, oh he's, he's, yeah. he's, 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 he's taking this anger from his relationship and he's being a kind it's, of a bad parent. It's uncomfortable as hell. It is very uncomfortable to read. I and that's like what James think, wants you to feel. Yeah, that's true. And he does like such a think, good job. I would like to think that I would not do this as a, as a father, if I were one. Mm -hmm. You gotta, gotta, it's like a game, you know, you're, you're dealing with a four year old, right? So you have to kind of trick him into being okay, but in a very ethical and, 
parental way. In a way that will not damage their like trust in humanity. Yelling, there is nothing in your closet. Isn't yeah. gonna help isn't gonna make your it, kid? Yeah. It's Monsters not gonna, aren't real, idiot. Yeah, it's not gonna make them <laughs> doesn't work for smarter. It's not gonna make them not scared, which mm-hmm. is the goal, right? So I pulled this page out of here to to <laughs> emphasize this. The bartender, the bartender what the he hell was that? says okay. to Tom <laughs> that hey I have actually experienced this with my friend, his kids, and what they decided to do is to spray some water and say that this mist is actually going to be repellent. And he calls it unicorn piss. Right. Magical unicorn piss that keeps monsters away. That's what it is, right? So this actually the bartender gives him a really good idea. I think it's a great idea. It's yeah. like so. So idea, you know, what you do is you put some like lavender and water and put it in a little right. spray bottle, and it's like, oh hey, you know, little it's little little fire guy. Out. This yeah. is gonna keep the monsters out, and it's lavender and it's calming because it's lavender. Oh, I'm the it's baby amazing. in this scenario. You're and the you're baby. My, and you're my daddy. I'm your daddy. Okay. You're the baby in this That's scenario. And I spray accurate. it right, and right. then you're like, oh, it smells like lavender. Also, lavender helps you go to sleep. Hmm. You know, so boom, and yeah. your sinuses. Start to feel a little bit better. Okay. Right? I'm learning all kinds of things right now. Lavender, man. It's magical. Come on. Why do you think you have to harvest it in dying light? Mm? Dying light? The yeah. zombie game? Yeah. Oh, your PS5? That's right. Asshole. I know, right? <laughs> so, all right. So, we have a great idea that's been thrown out, and this dad butchers it. He's, he goes home, and he's wasted at this point. He's had, like, three beers too many. That's right. He gets in trouble for getting the wrong kind of tape, for lying. And he tries to patch it up by being like, no, 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 don't worry. I got this uh, unicorn piss that we can use to, <laughs> he, he does it so bad. So what he does here is he fills up, he's like, oh, do we have a, a spray bottle we can use, honey? And she's like, we don't got anything. Everything they're in the middle of a up. move. <laughs> they're moving, right? They're, they're, they're trying to get a nice restart. So he just goes to the sink and pours water in a cup and says, oh yeah, see, this is magic. <laughs> and uh, this is like, going to spray this in the closet and you're going to be good to go. And the kid literally is four years old. He's not that dumb. He's like, I yeah. just saw you got that from the sink. I, dad. I saw you. <laughs> so no. it doesn't really work out. Um, he just butchered it. Now, I got to be careful here because I'm not relating this to my family in any way because of the comic, but there is a kind of a funny thing that I, that made me think about that, that, that I thought about when, when seeing this unicorn piss scene take place in this comic. So he butchers it cause he's trying to do something to, you know, help the kid not be scared. Right. But because he did it in a poor way, kind of just defeated the purpose. Right. So, um, my grandparents, there's no longer with us. Um, but my grandma, amazing woman, Puerto Rican, didn't speak English. Right. Half my family's in Puerto Rico. Right. I don't speak a whole lot of Spanish. Didn't as a kid either. So it was a different type of, type of relationship. But loved her to death, right? And I lost a tooth. And I was really excited to lose a tooth. First off, my grandpa just like ripped my teeth out. Yeah. I had a loose tooth. It's like a thing. He's like, oh, no, I'll do what I did to all the kids. I tried to do that with me once. I said, you back the hell off, sir. <laughs> I'm letting it fall out. You're not going to it was like it out of my head. I never was worried. I was so, um, I felt so protected by my grandparents that it was like, oh, yeah, grandpa's going to get his, uh, you know, it's, it's like a red bandana. He had like a red bandana, like handkerchiefs and stuff like that. It's always clean, you know. It like goes to his drawer, picks out like a, a fresh bandana. All right, sit on my lap. This tooth's got to come out. And he was just, just pulled that it. out. Just yanked oh, it out. My dad tried to do the whole tie the string around the doorknob or whatever. <laughs> like some kind of medieval torture stuff. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> nope. Even like bite into the apple and let your tooth just come out. No. So, I mean, I eat an apple. Like, you know, get out of here. <laughs> Ryan doesn't eat apples. He it'll, eats pizza 24-7. It'll, it'll fall out when it falls out, dad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do my homework. Yeah. So I lost a tooth. This is like one of the first times, right? I went through this process, right? So I got the tooth. I really wanted to, I was saving up for something. I don't remember what I was saving up for, but I put it under my pillow. Actually, no. Someone told me at some point that if you put the tooth in water and put that by your bedside, you'll get more money. Because it's easier than reaching under the pillow. Because it's that's easier. A, from a parent's perspective. Okay, I, yep. think, I think that's what it actually right. was. But, so I, I wrote a note and I'm like, hey, I, know. I came up with something, asking for more because I was being a greedy little kid, right? Give me the cash. Give me the cash. I couldn't sleep, dude. I was like so excited all day. I'm like, oh, finally. I'm going to get my $10 to get my, you know, toys from, you know, Kmart, or whatever it was at the time. So I woke up the next day and there was nothing there. And I was super distraught. It wasn't like screaming or something, but I was like, oh, no. So I went to like Catholic school in, in Buffalo, New York. My dad lived further away from the Catholic school. So I did a lot of my, my like 
schooling days with my grandparents, at least at, till at night. Sometimes I stayed there if it was more convenient. So I saw my dad's, my dad at the, on the weekends a lot, and he would end up moving the back of a comic book store, and I lived there with him eventually too. And that's how that all connects, right? But I'm like, I'm a little kid, right? Starting to lose teeth. I'm like, Dad, there was no money. I lost my tooth. The tooth fairy didn't show up. What? Why? What did I do? Why did the tooth fairy not show up? So this is a story about how I stopped, like why, like the first moment I stopped believing the tooth fairy because my dad's like, oh, hold on, Tom. Let me talk to your grandma. Again, all in Spanish. I'm watching my grandma talk to my dad on the phone and she's like, huh? Okay. Money? What? And she was like in disbelief that this was a thing. She like didn't know. Or if she knew, she didn't think that she's like, she thought we were like too good for this. She's like, oh, it's like it's Puerto Rican family. Yeah, we're, we I don't have any freaking money. We're yeah. in like, the, we're in like the, you know, the West side in Buffalo, New York, right? Like you want me to get money for your tooth? And she just starts talking. She's speaking fast in Spanish. I'm catching every other word, but I still remember it. She goes, okay. Okay, Tuto. His, his nickname is Tuto. Hangs up the phone. She looks at me and goes, tooth fairy left your money in, the, in my wallet. Let me go, let me go get my wallet. So that was the day that I realized that the tooth fairy was not real. At least you're. <laughs> I'm like, Grandma, what? She's like, No, no, yeah, they flew, and, eh. and she was like, At least she tried a little. I would. At like, least Tom tried a little yeah, with the fairies. unicorn piss. Okay, that's how you're bringing all this back. I'm bringing it all back. So okay. that's what it made me remind me of. Kind of, I hit the subscribe Ooh. button. That's over here. Let's talk about some funny books. So, unicorn piss, um, does doesn't go well. Doesn't go well, and they're going on a move. They're packing up. But the, the important thing is this, comic fam. We have the colors. So good. We have the child and we have the door. Is there something behind the door? <laughs> what do you Butch. think, Butch? That was perfect timing, Butch. Thank you. Butch is here. He is getting a little antsy because Ryan, you know. I'm not petting him. He's not petting him it's as much. not allowed. So what's behind the door? You're going to have to read it to find out. I will not spoil this book for you. It's too damn good. So there is one. Actually, there's, there's two other books that I wanted to highlight. We don't have to get into the, to the, to the last one. But there is a really cool... Um, Random wow. thing that's like, I look forward to this when it comes out. Department of Truth, Wild Fictions. This is like an essay about various topics that Department of Truth tackles. And there's some, not very much, there's not, a, there's actually like one picture. Typically it's, uh, it looks like he commissions a, a really cool artist to get it done. Right. Um, but there is like one image to a bunch of text. And if you're a fan of Department of Truth, you got to read this. And there's only one out right now, but it's about Bigfoot. Oh, there's a bunch a out right now. Oh, there's a bunch out. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's there's a, a I, missed, I missed a couple then. I, I read, yeah. Has there's the Chupacabra one come out? Chupacabra, I think, oh, is number two. Now I'm doing that They did one on, like, Santa Claus. All right, so I'm, I'm a little behind on these ones, comic fam. I, I read the, the Bigfoot one uh, last night because I had to hunt for it because I've been uh, up on the other, other ones. But yeah. But this one, um, I've been waiting for Chupacabra to come out, and I guess I, did, I missed it. So I think there's a tab for this whole section on the, on the sub stack, but... It's basically all built around the concept from Department of Truth, where, like, if enough people believe in a thing, then that thing will be real. Yes. And this is the department in the world of the Department of Truth. This is the department keeping tabs on various things, urban legend type stuff that they want to keep an eye on and make sure doesn't happen, doesn't get materialized into the real world. And then we have the oddly pedestrian life of Christopher, Christopher Chaos. He then, has the most... I love, I love Jimmy T, but the titles of some of his stuff is a little... A little much. It's, it's a little bit. Ryan says Something it's a little is much. Something killing the children. That's a lot. There's a lot of words. There is a lot of words, but this one right here is a, a comic that isn't written by him. This is not written by him. This is the idea is from James Tynan. It's being written by uh, Tate Brombal, the co-writer uh, that did House of Slaughter with him. So they're still adjacent. Yep. But He's got his whole Jimmy T crew going on over there. Sure. This series is actually going to be uh, free for everybody once it comes out. There we go. It has not started yet. There's been like a prologue that's been released, which is where these images are coming from. Yeah, we just have a little bit of an introduction of a character that's going up against these ghost cowboy looking characters with uh, sure guns. Exactly what's happening? I don't. I don't know. I, that's I, part of the fun of being in this Substack, though, is you get to follow the process. Yeah, you're, you're going to find out as you go. There have been a couple of teaser articles revealing some of the stuff about this world, and then. I think next month. I'm not sure exactly when the first chapter of this is going to come out, but you get to experience it as it drops, which is which is all part of the fun. And again, this story will be free for anybody. So you can just go to his Substack, hit type in your email, and you will receive these emails in addition to like the newsletters. 
Very true. Comic fan, we want to know your thoughts. Are you subscribed to any Substack uh, content creators? We are, I'm subscribed to three right now. Who? Um, uh, James Tynan, as mentioned. Right. Scott Snyder, who's okay. doing a whole comic book 101 like class. Like everybody's uh, doing it in a different way, which is so awesome. Like there's there's not like one way you have to do this. This is how, as Jim, a this is how James is doing it. Yes. But Scott is doing like a podcast. It's like an exclusive podcast where he's going over comic techniques. It's like a master class. But Scott Snyder. he's also sourcing other individuals. He had uh, Greg Capullo on one of the first ones. He had James Tynan on one recently that yeah, like James us on. Tynan people had access to. So I was there live for that one. That was so cool. That was fun. These are kind of small groups right now. Yeah. I mean, I imagine them growing quite large over time. Who's the third one? Oh, Donny Cates. Donny Cates. Yeah. And Stegman. And Stegman, they're, yeah. They're, they're tag team and a sub stack together. So, um, I might do that one. I haven't, I've only done the one. I'm, I'm, I'm subscribed to James Tynan and also Jen Bartell has a sub stack that I, I really like her art. So, so cool. I'm yeah. subscribed to that one. But uh, Scotty Young has one too. Everybody's got one at this point. It's like um, all in the and one of the biggest one is Jonathan Hickman, Jonathan who's created Hickman. an entire universe. Of course he is. That's how he does it. He's he's teamed up with a couple other people that I can't remember, but that, that's one I really don't have the time to get into. <laughs> I wish I did. But I'd have to sacrifice the four others to do just the one because yeah. there's so much. It's a lot of content, but it's Hickman, so that's expected. Yeah, there's graphs before every page. Uh, of course there are. Uh, info family history and, yeah you're getting into uh, a whole thing with him but if that's what you like then yeah. please go check it out because there's more than if you thought house of x and powers of 10 was cool i love and it like dude. that whole world he did he's gold balling it over there is what we're he, saying he's going he's going bonkers but yeah substack is a very cool platform for comics and a lot of creators are flexing their creative muscles over there in ways that they can't usually do especially in marvel and at dc all right batman we've been waiting batman both of us have been Robert Pattinson fans long before I think everyone else in this community. I've he was telling, ridiculed to all hell for two I've been years. Telling people to watch Good Time on this channel for several years now. Good Time, um, The Lighthouse. Yeah. The Lighthouse was really good. I, I like Twilight. I don't even care. Still haven't seen it. I did watch High Life where he was in space. Didn't care for that one so much. A twenty four. It's weird. It's a weird one. Not but my it, favorite. But he's good in it. He's good in it. But he's a good actor. That's right. And now, now people know. Well, you know what? I've been saying for a long time that. This right here is the recipe for a fantastic Batman film, and it was. And I want to yes. know your thoughts. We haven't really talked about this at we all. We not, actually. For as long as a movie it was, I was so happy to watch every damn second of it. Yes, I had a great time. I was not bored once. I went and saw it with, with Cole and Bree, actually. Did you really? My first time, yeah. Oh, snap. All of, our, all of our first times. Um, I think about getting the whole crew together, maybe renting out a theater to do uh, Doctor Strange. That'd think, be cool. Think everyone would enjoy that? Duh, yeah. We did uh, Shang-Chi with the group. Yeah. We have to do that with uh, the other ones, too. That was fun. But, uh, yeah, Cole and Bree and I went, and then as I was leaving the theater, I was like, this is my favorite Batman movie. But your favorite Batman movie. Easily, yes. Fire Guy Ryan's favorite Batman movie is Matt Reeves, Robert Pattinson. Yes. Well, what's up? But wow. I told myself, like, oh, interesting. Well, I got to hear what, hold on, hold on. I got to hear what the community thinks in the chat. I want to know in the comment section. Ryan's favorite Batman movie. And you're, like, including... Um, the, <sighs> Are you including like the Joker any, film any and any Batman. Christopher Nolan? You're talking about I, Tim Burton, everything. I, I would need to do some research, but my gut reaction is this is my favorite comic book movie. Whoa. That, okay. that is a less, less assured wow. statement, but it's easily my favorite Batman movie. And I actually was on a live stream with John's Comics with Kids and a couple other people a couple of weeks ago where we uh, had alcohol. And debated, we ranked all nine live-action Batman films, and by the time we got to the end, I was a little intoxicated. And I want to see this. It's it's worth a watch if you guys want to have three hours to waste and watch <laughs> several people get drunk and debate about Batman. But by the time we got to the end and I was more intoxicated than I wanted to be, I made the argument that this movie is better than The Dark Knight. And then I said, if you take Heath Ledger out of The Dark Knight... It's not a good movie. Comparably. Right, but they, they got all mad at me, incorrectly, John, if you're still here. They got all mad at me because they thought I was saying, take him out of the movie entirely. And I'm saying, tell me why you like the movie and don't say Heath Ledger. Because oh, obviously that performance okay. is great, but I'm not. they thought I meant remove the Joker plot line from the movie entirely and get rid of the Joker, get rid of everything. And I wanted somebody to tell me a good pro-Dark Knight argument without mentioning Heath Ledger's performance. Anyway... That's a whole different subject, and I'll get in trouble sure. for that in the comments here. I'm sure, but that's going to be the one thing that someone will say that's, you know, potentially blasphemous. Like, you would, oh, 
Heath Ledger. Uh, right. That, that that's that's the film. That's that's almost like the most common answer of favorite. It's easily Batman the number anything. two. The number two Batman movie for me. Yeah, me I too. think that's the argument for people is which one is better. I think that I need to watch it again. I need to watch it one more time to make a definitive answer. It's definitely not my favorite superhero movie. I think that's reserved for the crow. But I still haven't read. It's on my bookshelf though. Yeah, it's my copy. I'm still waiting for you to read it so I can get it back. But give it back. Um no, but this one right here is definitely one of my favorite um Batman movies. I, I think it's better than all the Christopher Nolan ones. I didn't care for the third one. I didn't like Tom Hardy Bane. I like Tom Hardy Bane, but other than that, that third movie. It was rough, man. The first one's kind of boring. It was okay. I, I honestly think that like, if people go back and watch those third movies, like they're now, not as good as they as they, as they were, were the when time. we watched them. Yes. yes. There's a lot of hype at the moment because it was the best you had at the time. Okay. Whatever. So, so we can at least be on the same page that we love the recent Batman movie. Sure. Both of us. A lot. Okay. Over the last week, a deleted scene has surfaced on the internet. It was released, and it shows the Joker. And we're talking about the movie, so I guess technically this is spoilers, but at this point, eh, you've been warned, right? Leave now. Leave now, but in just the movie... Any, everyone just leave anyway. <laughs> we're just going to end this video. Hit the like button on the way out, though. <laughs> no, um, but we had a Joker scene in the movie, and it was barely a Joker scene. It was like, hey, it could be Joker. Oh, it is Joker, but okay. A tease at the end with the Riddler in Arkham Asylum with the Joker as his, like... Next door neighbor. They're just chatting. Yeah. You don't see him. You I'm barely see him. Didn't like that part so much. It was my least favorite. Okay. I won't say that I didn't like it. I would say it's my least favorite part of the movie okay. in which I, you know, put on a pedestal at this point. It's really yeah. good. So yeah, it's maybe not all the way up on the pedestal, but it's like, Hey, it was cool. I was happy to see something. I would I'd rather um, see yeah. some Joker than no Joker. I don't know. If I, 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 I hmm. would have been cool to see another character. I kind of, don't want Joker at all in that movie. It's just it's just wrong to say because I feel like either we get the scene that we did get in the movie or have Joker. or get the about? deleted scene. And I'm not saying no Joker at all. I'm saying save him entirely for number two or even number three. Okay, not in the first movie. Okay, so what do you think about the? Okay, so but I love the deleted scene. The deleted scene is what we're here to talk about. Correct. And I want to know your thoughts on whether you thought it would have been better to have been put into the movie <sighs> or not. Should it have been a deleted scene or not? And do you think that this would be the type of Joker you want to see incorporated into the future? Because because it's a deleted scene, we do not know if this is canon. This could be scrubbed. We could have a completely different character design. Right. We could have casting altogether. Everything could be different. They, they, they held back for a reason. Why? That's something we don't know yet. We're speculating here. But assuming they probably wanted to save that just in case they wanted to change it. Or maybe it was too dark, it was too long. The studio could have said, hey, you need to make this movie five minutes shorter, damn it. They do. They have to deal with those kind of things. This deleted scene made me like the movie more. What about you? Agreed. It would take a lot for me to it would, to make it me like it less. So me not liking it more would be a hard ask. But that is a good question, though. Like, If the question is include this scene in place of the sort of kind of Joker scene that we did get, mm-hmm. Maybe in addition to, we could add two or one and a half scenes with the Joker or none at all. Like, I don't know what sort of combination would have worked best. We did get the barely Joker scene in the at the end in the final theatrical cut. But well, you tell me then two would have been Is this much, jo- OK, so let's 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 take it back a step. Then the Joker deleted scene. You said you enjoyed it. Mm hmm. We're getting a taste of what could be the Joker of this universe that is clearly profitable and killing it in numbers. We're going to get more Robert Pattinson Batman. Correct. He's signed on for three. So is this a Joker that you're saying, you know what? Bring it. Yes. Absolutely, right? I think this is great casting. I showed you that clip from The Green Knight. Yeah. The A24 movie with, with uh, I think it's Dev Patel in the, in the lead role. I could be wrong on that one. I um, bought it off Amazon for five bucks or okay. six bucks. And I didn't buy it, but I rented it. Fell asleep in the first 30 minutes. Missed out on the scene yet you showed me. The guy who plays the actual Green Knight is the dad from The Witch. By it the way. is. You can hear it in his voice. Dad from The Witch. The Witch, right. Oh, yeah. Anya, Anya. Is it really? Yeah. That's yeah. him under there. No kidding. Oh. That's very cool. A little A24. Makes me like it a little bit more. If there's yeah. an Anya Taylor, um, Anya Taylor Joy. Anya. Anya. Okay, see, I'm saying it wrong. There's Anya Taylor Joy um, connection. Tom's I, in. I, I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. She's it's my celebrity crush. I've, I've said it on the mic multiple times. You know what? She's got to be. If she is not Erica Slaughter, 
I will stop reading Something is Killing the Children. I will never talk about a James Tynan book again. You should cancel yourself. I'm just kidding. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. That's not going to happen. But she's got to be Erica Slaughter. She'd be really good. So, yeah, that's anyways. a whole separate so, conversation. So we have, um, we're, we're in agreement. This is like sadistic, grotesque Joker. This is this is more on the scale of Snyder Joker than Heath Ledger's. This is closer to the Gotham finale Joker than yeah. anything we've ever seen. You showed me that scene, unfortunately. That's my only time I've CW, seen. CW. You know. I've never seen Gotham before until that one. It's not bad. The final scene of the whole show, I guess, was what Tom showed me with yeah. Joker and the. the yeah, he hadn't the seen it yet, but he didn't watch Gotham, which I don't really blame you for. Yeah, it didn't look good. To I'm me. not caught up on any CW shows anymore. I watched the first two episodes of Naomi, and they weren't terrible, but I it's just not. I didn't even watch that. Man, it's tough, dude. CW is just, it's it's not where superhero shows should be debuted. HBO, man. They got access to HBO. HBO, yeah. They, that's where it's all got to go. All right, but here, tell me. What do you think? Um, sadistic this Batman. interpretation of Joker, uh, Joker I love. I think... Not Batman. Sadistic Joker. I think the last... What well, we had... Uh, it's hard, I guess you got to count Jared Leto, but it's hard to like describe what kind of Joker Jared Leto was because he was barely... Just in, awesome. I that, like... That, Jared Le- that Joker is awesome Joker. I'm not messing around. I don't disagree with you either. I He's think, cool. I think he unfortunately gets lumped in with the rest of the Suicide Squad movie, which was Poo Poo. But his yeah. Joker, I think, was pretty creepy and cool. I liked his Joker, A dude. different kind of Joker than so anything we've fun. seen before. So much fun. But this, this version is, what... is a little... Uh, it's my, it might be closer to that one than to Joaquin, especially, or even Heath Ledger's joker <laughs> lucky that's right yeah. i forgot about that really I, it's a side thing i really i really like that that's that's I another one that's in that my movie. oh man i liked it I, at the time i don't know man it's, it's just taxi driver yeah it's just not it's not joker is what it is i like, mean you sound like russ look at this okay this is I, I couldn't i couldn't pick the uh i couldn't put the video on screen you know get taken down copyright style but this right here is uh, a this few is, of the shots that we can see. and This is more useful anyway than the actual video. Yeah, you actually don't get um, a full shot of the character. You have to piece it together with all these different shots. But look at the back of his head. Clearly, he's... I think what we're getting here is a Joker that's already faced Batman. Oh, absolutely. So that right there makes me more excited about the movie because we're not just seeing Batman at his year two. There has been, during year two, he's been up against some crazy crap already. Like... What we saw was probably, you know, just another day. There's so much history behind, uh, from the past. Come if ever going two hours in today, hot damn, hit the like, hit the subscribe button. That's why my That's brain a lot is, of is, comic book is theme empty content. right now. Yeah. Like, damn, dude. I love this Joker. I love the way he looks. I love the way he acts. His fingers. I, he's creepy. Yeah. His laugh is, is chilling that he, that he lets out at the end of this scene. You want to put some lip gloss on those lips, man. Yeah, just give it a something. big old kiss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you first, but yeah. <laughs> you first, Ryan. Oh my goodness, he says. All right, let's do it. Um, I want to know the community's thoughts about this. I personally am crossing my fingers that there was a disdain for utilizing this in the theater in the, in the original release, and you know they they do a lot of. Um, testing of the movie and maybe this was too much maybe it was too creepy maybe it was too grotesque they're like you know what we don't want to go that far yet they do the deleted scene leak see the reaction of the community right the yeah. leak they release it and people will go oh hell yes or nope i'm glad they didn't do that i think I this is going to be a hell it. yeah situation yeah and they keep this canon it's considered a deleted scene and this is what we're going to get in the future that's what i'm hoping for i hope so too i just think it would have been a little much in the movie, especially with the runtime that was almost as long as this podcast. That's right, man. You guys could have watched. It's almost. You, actually, you probably would have only gotten through the first half. So we've talked a little bit about comic books today, and I appreciate the community being here. We, we, went, we went long, but that's what happens when you're talking about funny books. You know, you just kind of get into it. So um, I'm going to leave you with this here. Um, we love horror comic books. We love horror movies on this podcast. Agreed. One of my favorite horror movies of all time, horror franchises, minus the last, not the last one. There's been a new one that I really enjoyed. I think it's number seven. The, the, seven? It's number six or seven. Yeah, I the, forget the, where I stopped. The, the final of the first set of paranormal activity movies, this is my favorite horror movie. Um, at least horror franchise. Okay. Paranormal activity. I was about to hard disagree with you, but franchise I will accept. Franchise, yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing film, um, especially the first one. Um, there's a documentary of how this was put together, and 
it is glorious. It's going to make you want to get creative. It's going to make you want to uh, make a freaking horror movie out of your home because that's what this gentleman did. What is your favorite horror movie? Of all time? Hereditary. Okay. Yeah, Good hands answer. down. I've watched it like a hundred times, dude. I love that movie. So, I almost Paranormal watched Activity. it yesterday. Yeah, man. That third act. The whole thing. Amazing. Watch Hereditary, people. Yeah. Oh, it's what's up with your face on your face? It's hard to recommend. Not, that's it's, not the quote, but you a, know. It's a downer of a movie, but it's it's a great movie. It's amazing, man. It's uplifting, It's dude. no paranormal activity, however. It's no, no, no paranormal activity. No, 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 I can't talk. He's going to be going too long, comic fam. Okay. Um, join me over on whatnot. I dropped this exclusive for the comic community, and I am very proud of it. This right here is the Stray Dogs Dog Days Trish Forstner Tony Fleece Paranormal Activity Variant. I have 420 of these. Yes, 420, baby. That's how many we got. So I dropped this on whatnot stream, my whatnot stream last Wednesday, and I realized I didn't tell the community on YouTube about it. Oops. Whoopsies. So I got to tell you right now, I will have copies of this for sale on my whatnot Wednesday stream tomorrow with Heron heavens 5 PM tomorrow. Join me for a chilling time. Actually, it's going to be really fun. Um, and it's not chilling at all, but this book is because we got the dogs paranormal I how, activity. I love how they're on a people bed. I know. It right? could easily made that like a little doggy bed on the floor. No, it's like, it's gotta be the same. <laughs> it's gotta be the same. Yeah. It's an homage. We do it right. We yeah. appreciate your time today. Comic fam. That was bags and boards. Number 55. We did it. We did the whole thing. Oh, we did the whole thing. That's a lot of comic book talk. Look at us. Ugh. The podcast is changing a little bit pretty soon. But you know what? Um, we are glad that you're here, and we're going to be doing more. It's going to be more often, Trying to get shorter. Me, get me back here more regularly. Hopefully shorter. Yeah. Two hours is two hours too long. Well, now we know, man. Got to limit it to just a handful of things. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, we're going to do what we got to do. Just got to shut the whole thing down, man. This channel's over channel's done restart at comic time 102 you know <laughs> it was a prologue yeah well should i do different with my hair this this round this reality version I, I think i need to come back ball with the freaking eye patch pull a donny case that's how it's done in alternate universe i'll do it too yeah we'll both maybe next week eyeballs. maybe next week we we come to the mic with eye patch on and good idea yeah I need to get one of those monocle. Wait, wait, what is it? Is it what is it? Monocle? Like a, monop like a monopoly guy. Like the monopoly guy. Exactly. Yeah, it's a monocle. Monopoly. Monocle. <laughs> <A> monocle. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go to bed. <laughs>